Welcome to a land of mystery, peril, and awe. A vast and old one at that. The legends of old have long passed. The era of peace has moved on. A child might see this world as a simple land, but it is far from it. A war is brewing with countless lives on the line, and now it is up to these champions from various walks of life to come together in an epic tale of heroism, friendship, and freedom. Hiya folks, I'm Danny, and this is Gardens of Radon, a live play tabletop game of Dungeons and Dragons set in the rich and chaotic country of Radon. For those who may not be aware, Dungeons and Dragons, or D&D, is a game where you play with friends who roleplay as characters in a story told by the Dungeon Master. This is a game of rolling dice to see how good or bad you are at accomplishing tasks, critical problem solving, and improvisational storytelling. I will play the role of Dungeon Master. But my role is pointless without some players. So, without any further ado, let's get to know the Champions of Radon. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'll be playing Tybalt Todd, a silver dragonborn necromancer with a knack for the weird. He has a skeletal rat friend named Winston, and he also yearns to understand life and death. As a professor at Belfort, Tybalt might not be the most socially adept individual, but his magical prowess and investigative mindset are unmatched. I'm Sarah, and I'll be playing Day, a furbold warlock sorcerer who can be a bit unhinged at times. For the majority of her life, she lived in prisons from the Vale, a gated fey area in the wild woods, saturated with demonic magic, with the veil mutating her body to appear hairless and younger than she truly is, she's trying to make sense for powers and who she is. Hello, I am Anna, and I'm playing Thigeo Zakanu, the proud and bloodthirsty Goliath Paladin. Um, as the heir to the Paladinic Order of the Oak, it's been Thigeo's life to honor the natural world, as well as being a sword to her people. But as troubles from the rest of the country weigh on her shoulders, Thigeo's faith is tested. I'm Nate, and I'm playing Blanton Oath Lodge, the Warforged Barbarian and Resident Gentle Giant. Created by the famed Dwarven blacksmith and inventor Armbjorn Oath Lodge, Blanton was welcomed to his creator's family with open arms and raised as a son and brother, being the youngest of all of his dwarven siblings. After a terrible cave-in within the Kingdom of Haloom, which seemingly took the lives of his father and his family, Blanton has traveled for dawn for years in search of a new purpose and meaning to his life, a purpose that he has yet to still find. I'm Brittany and I'm playing Ghost, a high elf ranger and blood hunter, and I'm the best shot in this whole damn country. Making a name for herself in the lawless desert city of Corotozone, the only things that speak to Ghost are her own safety and her main goal is to find the murderer of her highborn parents. I'm Sean, and I'll be playing Sonaris Fenner, a half elf fighter who discovered the mysterious power of runes. Son to a human smith and a high elf merchant, Sonaris always had an adventurous soul. Disagreements with his parents forced him to become a mercenary out of the free city of Long Beach, making a home there for himself, until one tragedy led to another. Unsure of what his life holds now, Sonaris waits for his answer. Hi, I'm Athena. I'm playing Sage, a Fearbolg artificer mm -hmm. monk with quite a robust collection of um, medicinal herbs. From the Wildwood Fearbolg tribe, Sage saw firsthand what horrors this world can have by seeing her people massacred. Without direction, she turned to Belfort to find magic, and in turn, religion, 
As her faith came into question, she rebuilds herself into the powerful being she truly is on the inside. A laid-back alchemist who isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. Whether by chance or prophecy, these characters, and those who have perished along the way, have gone through quite the ordeal in order to get to where they are now. So, just to get on the same page, allow me to paint you a brief picture of the story so far. A few months ago, in the dingy little village of Bester, our heroes were faced by a surprise attack by the goddess of nature, Ayuna. Ayuna and her army of infected nature hosts, the Grove, made quick work of the village, but not before our heroes held the line against the god. Then, suddenly, a magical energy from a mysterious entity, later revealed to be the soul of Tiberius, teleported Ayuna out of Bester and all of our heroes to various points around Radon. Tiberius telling his champions that a war is coming and Radon must prepare. With our heroes split up into two parties, the Chaotic Crusaders in the south and the Pillars of the Wild in the north, they independently discover the secrets of the threats that are coming and, more importantly, how to stop them. These two threats are the Ancients and the Empire. Working in cahoots, the Ancients are the gods that represent the four natural elements of the universe, wind, water, flame, and nature. The Empire are the muscle of the Ancients in their world-hopping crusade to quell demonic presences. But wherever the Empire goes, they leave nothing behind. If the Ancients and Empire take hold of Radon, only destruction would follow. While the two parties discover more about each other, various individuals and plots within their travels, unfortunate losses, and new compatriots along the way, the two parties finally meet by pure luck in Nevisera, Kingdom of the Elves. While pleading their cases to the elven royalty, Esnas, God of Flame, was released into the kingdom and leveled it to a pile of rubble and ash. The newly formed champions found their way to the free city of Long B with refugees. We find the champions currently attempting to make a safe haven for the refugees and to put an end to this war before it gets worse. Whew! Alright, you all caught up? Good. As a disclaimer, keep in mind that we're primarily playing digitally so our audio may not be the highest of quality at times. Speaking of which, this is the audio-only version of our campaign that broadcasts on YouTube and Twitch every other Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We've been playing this campaign since January of 2020, and considering that we've just finished a massive raid into the Mysterious Vale... The start of a new season is a great time to jump in. But enough rambling. Get set, get cozy for this episode of Guardians of Radon. Last, uh, last season in Guardians of Radon... Everybody uh, made their way on over uh, to the city of Nevisera, Kingdom of the Elves, where everybody was able to meet for the first time uh, and sort of made their way across the, the, the kingdom, solving a few odd jobs here and there, a mystery or two, and talking to elven royalty to see, you know, every everything that's been going on amongst the travels between the Pillars and the Crusaders, and about the two threats of the Ancients and the Empire. Finding resistance with the uh, with Elven royalty, in one of the odd jobs that you've taken um, across Nevisera, Esnas, the, the God of Flame, was released and turned Nevisera into a giant 
puddle of rubble and ash. Um, everybody was able to get teleported out of Nevisera via the grace of Moros and Veda, the gods of wind and water, into the beaches of Long B, um, where you guys sort of made your way to discover that most of the refugees have been in the Long B area and are trying to seek refuge, where you guys did the most that you can to try to make Credo, a neighboring village, a good place for the refugees to sort of stay in. You handled a Knoll issue in the Knoll lands, discovering Heretic's Conclave, and most recently, you guys ventured into the Vale, discovered its mysteries, and slew the demon within, unfortunately losing one of our famed and most illustrious members of our party, Valzir. Uh, by the time you guys have a returned from the Vale, you were teleported by a quirky little silver dragonborn wizard named Tybalt Todd, making your way on over back to Long B for a long-deserved rest. You guys re-emerge in the bowels of the of the uh, of the polite bone inn over a over a meal, a breakfast meal catching um, Tybalt up to speed on, you know, the story so far. And that's where we start today. Wait, so we did a long rest last time? Yes. It is current oh. it is currently yeah. it is currently morning of the next day. You guys are actively eating breakfast. I will say that I am not eating anything. I have nothing in front of me except for maybe a small plate of, of raw meat. And I'm taking bits of it and feeding it to my pet, uh, my pet familiar, uh, Winston. This little small skeleton rat who is just sitting on my shoulder and I'm just feeding him little bits of meat. Has it been 24 hours? Uh, it's, I'd say it's roughly been 12. Damn, so I'm still Have fat. Have we been arrested? Yes, <laughs> yes, you, you are arrested. Cool, so I'm still fat then. For another 12 hours. Right, every... <laughs> right. You still Welcome have to green. my never-ending thing. Get ready for four more sessions of this. <laughs> where I had to deal with fat power for four sessions. And it sucked. I mean, it doesn't really suck. Um, I just can't fit into tight spaces. Mm. <laughs> Um, I mean, most of the characters at this party are just absolutely huge anyway, so welcome to the club, I guess. <laughs> yeah, As me and Glenn, like, not uh, tiny. The, the Gayo, who's a Goliath, and Day, who's also another few bulk. Um, I'm also very tall. I'm like 6'4". Uh, you guys are sort of um, <laughs> sitting in the, in the, in the, in the biggest table uh, in the Polite bone in. You can see that all of the tables around the area have sort of been pushed together so all of you guys can fit in one table. All of the chairs and tables have been spread out to give you guys the majority of the space. Um, you can see a few individuals coming in uh, from from outside, inside. Sort of all... I don't want to say lackadaisical, but in, in, in active reverence of your bravery. You can see that there is one human individual who comes in, busting through the door. Ugh. Where, where, where are these champions? Where are they? You! Oh, nobody raised your hands. Everybody ignore hey. them, please. Uh, uh, you went in the veil, didn't you? Nope, you got the wrong guys. Yeah. I, I am... Bartender! You can see that um that that the, the Eric Cochran bartender is sort of like <laughs> ah, Jeros, please control yourself. Another round for the champions of Radon! Everybody literally else, wanna take my staff. Everybody I else literally wanna take my staff as well. Nope. I I look at everyone. As he, I want to you know, and I just quietly, I look, I look 
between you all and the man. Is he, uh, got some annoyance? I could deal with it if you would like. Yeah, you're right. There is no need for that. I mean, it wouldn't be harming him. It would just simply be a little bit of, uh, politely telling him to go away. Do whatever you like. Um, uh, Sage, you wanted to go ahead and clock him with your staff? Like, honestly, if he's gonna be rambunctious, I kinda wanna just, like, take my staff and just... Clock if it, him, knock him I over. Want, I want to... I want to reach out and catch Sage's staff before she clocks him. Uh, I Sage, roll to hit. Uh, Dexterity check. Uh, sleight of hand. Uh, so that was a... 10. Uh, 14. 14. Right, right before the tip of your staff reaches on over to, uh, to the top of this bald, uh, human, Glanton's giant hand <clears throat> grabs it. Look over there is no and I'm just... for that stage. I sigh very diligently, and I'm just like, fine. <laughs> I look at stage. I, w- I wouldn't normally say violence is the answer, but I mean, if you really want him to go away, I can. I I can do something, and I grab him's hand. I look at him, not angrily. I just give him like a, a kind of my normal indifferent blank stare would you please let us be kind uh, I cast dominate person. person there we go sorry okay you're good okay okay so you cast dominate person on this poor ass drunk human um roll as- a wisdom save uh, do, do I even have to <laughs> who knows maybe this fucking drunkard is the he has the I highest mean, wisdom stat I've mean, ever seen in our entire life. I mean, who knows? I, can't I mean, I might it's gotta be with disadvantage, because he is intoxicated. He is sloppy <laughs> right now. I'm gonna roll disadvantage, because I rolled a two. It's a two. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, as I grab my hand, his eyes will flash a little bit of... And in his mind, he hears, Run as far away as you can. And leave us be. As soon as and as soon as I let my hand go, he does just so, but blankly, almost zombie-like. Um, uh, as as soon as you say that, just... yeah, as soon as you say that, he he still has a grip of his uh, of his tankard. Um, he sort of like goes, you know, a little limp. He. As he runs away, you can see that his ale is spilling on the floor, but he runs with, like, noodle arms out of the bar, just... <laughs> As he makes his way, he kind of, like, forgets to open the door and, boom, hits the door and just pushes himself through it again. Oh, um, that was cool. I look back at everyone. Yeah, I look back at everyone, I'm like... Problem solved. Everybody around the main table just looks at the display that Tibble did. Huzzah! Everybody just cheers for I, you again. Oh. I just have like a slight smile and I continue feeding Winston the little scraps of meat, the raw meat. You see that the meat, like parts of the parts of the raw like muscle fibers that he's not able to get into his mouth sort of flops on your shoulder again. He tries to reach for him. I, I pick them up, you know, and I just pet him on his little skeleton head. His, uh, his body clackles under your fingers. So, you all seem to ha- have had a time as of late, at least yeah, from no what shit. you all have told me. Yeah, and who are you? Well, uh, I didn't properly introduce myself when I, you know... Yeah. Kind of boop to back here. My name is uh, Tybalt Todd. I am the current 
professor of necromancy at Belfort, but uh, by means that I am not yet ready to divulge, I was sent here from the school. What, what do they call it? Uh, an ambassador, kind of a guide, supposed to help you. Listen, I I had a lot of paperwork I was doing on on the way here. I I'm a little frazzled myself, and then everybody's like, just boop them here, just get them here. And I was like, I, I guess. And, and you know, and then Winston was hungry, and I you know I I. Hope long story you short, lie. you're here now. I'm asking myself the same thing. They said I was qualified. I took that as a compliment, and I was like, okay then. So I, I'm here now. I am truly sorry to hear about your friend. But maybe with the work you are all doing and the work that I'm doing, we could, we could find a way to maybe alleviate some of that grief some form or fashion and I just stare blankly at all of you with my hands like just kind of curled I need a drink I'm gonna go up to the bar I would like a drink as well ditto I uh, I look at I look at Glanton my tall metal friend are they always so standoffish I, I feel like I might be intruding a little bit I would not say that you are intruding. They are, they can be standoffish when the, when they feel it is necessary. Um, um, at, oh. at, at the table remains uh, Tybalt, Sage, Glanton, and Thageo, um, where Ghost, Sonaris, and Day have made their way on over to the bar where, again, you see the um the eagle Eric Cochran bartender sort of hastily making drinks for you and your new cult fans, I'd say. Give me something strong. Okay. Whatever you got. You know what you Surprise me. I'll even take the bottom shelf shit. Just don't <laughs> want to do it. I just need something strong. Uh, as as they're over as they're over there as I, I just like look at look at them over there, like like demanding their drinks. It's like, and it appears that in this moment, their said standoffishness is most definitely a necessity. After what we have been through, uh, the uh, the Eric Cochran lays down an entire bottle of uh, Southern Falls rum. By all means, on the house. Do what you will with it. Honestly, it's take it off my hands before the ruffians, you know, make a fool of themselves. I trust you, at least. I'll grab the bottle and I'll put down five pole and I'll walk away. He, uh, with, with a with a with a beaked smile, he pulls the uh, five gold. You guys want to split this or no? I'll split we'll it. Grab some sure. some cutlery. Sure. Give me some cups as well. Well, I'll get there. Or something. It's three, 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 uh, three medium-sized cups are pushed towards Ghost, Sonaris, and Day. I'll pour the, the liquor just straight into each of the cups. Mm -hmm. Is there one for me, or did you only get enough for the uh, champions? It's just the three uh, of us. There's only three of us. Oh, I thought you. Uh, oh no, I thought you got it for like the whole table. I was. Confused, no, sorry. No, no. I'm, I mean, like okay. Blanton. No. Blanton is Unless he just won it, in which case I'll so bring it over. Yeah, and I'll I'll bring it over. Um, I kind of want to hold up the glass and just say cheers to us, cheers. and then and then drink it. I. I notice you all drinking, and I'm like, well, I'm actually actually quite we want to uh i mean we're here for the time being but that doesn't mean i can't show you a little bit of my skill and i i'll walk over to the bar very very like slowly and i'll uh i'll go to the bartender i'm like uh do you, do you happen to have 
pure hundred proof liquor. Frat boy. More ethanol based. Frat boy. I, I, I wouldn't be a cop dead without the raw shit, so. And a, and a, and a tall little glass pours over uh, just pure alcohol. Uh, I was wondering if you had a bigger container. Uh, that'll run you two gold, buddy. Uh, I put down three gold, and I, uh, I take the big container of pure alcohol, and I go back over to the table where Sage and Glanton are, and I, I set it down right in front of me, and I take out a long bone wand, and I start kind of almost stirring the alcohol with it, and as I'm doing it, I'm just saying words in Draconic under my breath, and I want to also take out... <laughs> from my, like, pouch. I want to take out, um, almost like a formaldehyde jar that has, like, various different pieces of humanoid parts in it, like an eyeball, an ear, a finger, different things like that. There's, like, a rotten tooth in there. Yeah. Uh, I want to take that out, and I want to, uh, and I want to take some of the raw meat that I was feeding Winston, I want to drop it in the alcohol, I want to take out uh, the eyeball, the ear, drop it in the, uh, alcohol, and with my wand and, and kind of incantation, I want, I want to, uh, you, as I keep stirring, it almost, like, blends everything together, and I want to then take the jar and pour it onto the table. Like what? right right in the center of the table, like you can see that this just mass of human just this, just this human biomass just sort of plops onto the floor. A few like li- like mysterious liquids almost seep through the wood and sort of drip Cast the animate dead. And I want to make a small little mini homunculus of sorts. The mass begins to sort of begin to take shape where the eye sort of moves on over to the top of the mass. The tooth goes slightly underneath. The ear goes to the right side of where this mass sort of begins to elongate. You can see that it begins to sort of stretch a little nubs of what arms would be. Mm -hmm. You can see that a small little like bone begins to jet out of the bottom acting as a acting as like a leg and sort of props himself up. It doesn't I I, a point to it. I'm like, see this. This is my life's work right here. Magnificent! It's 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 life created from nothing. Can we see this from the? Bone? And I almost like. Does Day see this? Because uh, she's obsessed yeah, with uh, bones. Uh, uh, <laughs> perception on the three that are at the bar. Okay. A little like flash in my eye, like my purple eyes, and I'm just like I almost look unhinged, and mm. I'm just smiling. This is like the first, like I'm smiling more than I have so far, and I just look at my creation, and I'm like... You can see, you can see that the humuncula begins to slither towards Tybalt a little bit. Fourteen. Seven. Fifteen. But my, my past perception's higher. Sonaris and Day, you are able to see it, where Ghost is consumed uh, with, her, with her rum. He... He's got I kind of I look at I look at um Glanton. I imagine in your world you were created once. You were given life. This this is what I see as very similar. It's my little uh experiment. This is rudimentary in its base form, but imagine this on a wider scale but with an actual full body rather than just bits. I look at this creature that was just created in front of me. 
like wa- like watching Tybalt like smile and be so be so proud of his creation. I, I just like, look at I just like look at him. It's like <laughs> sorry. Uh. It's a, it's okay. You're coughing. It, it smells so bad. Well, Glanton can't smell, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, <laughs> but somehow oh, he can't smell. smell. <laughs> it smells so bad that he can smell it. Uh, Glanton Glan- smell. Glanton, uh, Glanton looks at it as like, it is most definitely interesting, and I do and I do see, and I do agree with you, that, in fact, I was also created as. This is your creation here. Your your skills in in your aid of our of our group may definitely prove prove us useful. I hope, at least in my opinion. I uh, I kind of pet the homunculus a little bit, like good, and then I uh, slap my hand down on it, and it disappears. And just splatters across the table. Seeing this thing, I, on I the am. Table. I am still. Like, I, don't get me wrong. Glanton is a little bit unnerved by this, but he's trying to be as as respectful as as he can. Seeing the thing on the I table, I take the bits. I look back over to uh, Ghost today. I'm like, lost one whack job to just get another one. Still don't know what you're talking about. I was too entranced with rum. He's got bones, dude. He, look, at, look at our table. It, it's fucking weird. Oh. <laughs> That's uh, disgusting. I have Miss Fells here. Day, Fuck you. Day, you you kind of <laughs> notice that a- a- after seeing this weird sight of a weird homunculus like sort of coming from nothing, this is something that you would expect you would see from the veil. And usually when you see weird stuff like this, the demon usually makes a comment. You notice it is completely absent now. It is just you. Facts. Um, I pick up the tooth, I pick up the ear, I pick up, you know, I pick up the bits that were making it and I put it back in my formaldehyde jar and put it back in my pouch. That's gross. Now, when I asked you originally, when you all kind of appeared from my teleportation, I asked about your friend's body. If there's any way we could ever get to it, now I guess that the, uh, the veil is gone. We buried that, and respectfully, I think we should leave him buried. But you all seem so distraught about it, I figure I could help bring him back. Listen, we all have people we love. Why let them fleet away from this world? Why not... Why not bring them back better than ever? Because I think things that are dead should stay dead. Well, I agree, Ghost, on a basic hygienic level, and I just kind of, like, look at the gross remnants that are on the table, and I'm just like, we might be able to bring back Balzir's form, but I think his charming personality might not be um, as vivacious. But if see, he that's, were that's exactly to that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take what was dead and bring it back. No, no problems, no changes. <laughs> right. You, you're the professor. He did. How long have you been the professor of necromancy at Belfort, if I might ask? Ah, <sighs> gosh. It's been about. It's been about. How many die do I need to roll? Um, <laughs> f- uh, remind. Uh, s- s- <laughs> I need a reminder. Say, Sage and uh, Day, make a history check for me. 
Kaza, because you, 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 you two, you know, were in Belfort. Connections to Belfort. That's a 25. Bah! I got a 10. <laughs> um, I was too high to remember. Considering, uh, Day, you were in, you were in the Sorcerer's Ward, um, and Sage, you were in the Cleric Ward, you really didn't have much experience with the, um, with the wizard ward, so you never really ran into Tibble that often. So you actually really don't... You've never studied under him. You knew of his name, but to the to that extent, that's kind of it. Day wouldn't, because Day's old. Oh, Day was before my time. That's right, I forget Day's, like, fucking... Day's before my time, if anybody yeah. would have been there, would have been Sage. And even then... I'm, old I'm, fuck. I'm old, but I'm older than you. So, um, I've I've been the professor for about uh, uh, between ten, twenty years now. I I always forget. Uh, but I've been at the school since I was a a young man, a young boy even. I've taken my time. I've this wasn't me learning on a lark, it took a lot of convincing from the council to actually even become a necromancy professor. Right, right, because it's so ethical to just bring back people again, from the again, dead. Again, I understand, I understand, consent. I understand the, sig the stigma that is around the ne necromantic art. A stigma? <laughs> and Sage just, like, slams a hand down. You want us to bring our dead friend back from a traumatic experience not even a full day after we've had time to process. Give me a fucking break, bro. As she goes off, I just blink at her. Exactly, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what no, exactly I'm, I'm trying to say. I return uh, from the bar, walk up from walk up from behind Tibble. You will not touch that body. Again, I'm not meaning to Then don't bring disrespect. it up. Like I I I I I, I butt in like like since I'm already at since I'm already, since I've still been at that at the table, it's like <clears throat> I believe what's my what patriots are trying to trying to say is, is that sit as we knew our 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 friend be better better than you, we we kindly ask that out of respect you, or like that you respectfully that you respect our wishes to keep him in the states that he is in. I kind of listen to everyone's opinions and I look at Takeo and Day. And how do you both feel on the matter? As as the two people who have known Valzir in within this group the longest. Not only really did good. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Day. No, no it's okay. I it, it, think he just he needs to he's dead and it's it's best that he remains dead. I mean that sounds sadistic to say it, but it's best that he remains dead. Take it from someone who has seen almost all of their loved ones die and even occasionally come up as a grove or some sort of undead it's why would you do that in the first place I... like the, the, the um it's just this is somebody who i loved and <laughs> if you're asking me to take away the humanity as a as a vehicle of whatever you're trying to accomplish that is inhumane. I will not stand for it. I... I take a deep breath, and I look at Degea. What I'm trying to get at, and you bring up a good point, the Grove, 
are inhumane. They twist the body and the soul. I don't want that. I never wanted that when I decided to go into this profession. And I even, I eye her down. I even, like, my glasses snoop to my snout, and I even look at her with my bare eyes. I am trying to stop people from feeling the way you all do. I don't want you all to be sad. I don't want you all to grieve. I want you all to be... What's, what's the right term? Content. You want and I don't mean... I don't want him to come back as some mindless thrall. I don't want him to come back as some half person of what he once was. I want him to come back fully as he was. And that goes for anybody. These things take time. I've taken time looking at the grove. I've had my fair share of of dissecting to try to see and I'm still coming up blanks except for oh I don't know everyone keeps telling me a giant green woman in the fucking sky keeps doing this but I want to do it in a way that is not monstrous I want to do it in a way that helps people but I don't mean any disrespect to your friend or to you all it's purely scientific. And it's Stop purely it right out of the kindness, as much as I can muster, out of my heart that I want to do this. Well, if you go I near don't... that body, I'm going to shoot you. Valzir needs to be laid to rest. His body needs to be put to rest. He's been through enough. So... Kindly respect that and leave his body out of this. Go look for some old man who died in his bed. Just leave Alzir out of this. Let, let him be at peace. He deserves it. Fine. If that is what you all wish, I will let you. I will let him be. As soon as uh, the gayo, what? as soon as the gayo says what is a, uh, what is on her mind, you see that the doors from the from the bone in open, and from outside, the black kenku rat appears. Champions! City Hall, if you will. Pumia needs words exchange. Get one damn day of rest. Lantern looks over and says, Good morning, Rat. Yes, thank you. We will be there shortly. Uh, rat Always so fucking polite. Rat gives a politeful <laughs> bow and closes the uh, doors back. I'll say one last thing, and then we can make our way. I'm here. Both because I was told to be here, and because I find this beneficial to my work. If you don't want me here, sorry. But I will be here, and I will help in whatever way I can. All that I ask is that you give me understanding as much as I will give you all the benefit of the doubt. Are we clear? We'll see. I just mockingly salute Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> I kind of, uh, I get up. I kind of fix my robes, and I pat Winston on the head, and Winston crawls up my shoulder into the neck, like, where my robe goes to my neck, like, my neck, my collar, and he just disappears. You sort of, he sort of clicks and clatters. Then I start 
I put my wand away and I start making my way out the door. I guess, do we follow him and or are we just gonna... We're all heading in the same direction, so... Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're all going to the capital. Alright. Let's, let's go in. As soon as, uh, as soon as everybody, you know... And they didn't think they'd, uh, need a rundown immediately, you know? Yeah. There's no rest for us, apparently. Clearly. As soon as, uh... At least the weather is nice. As soon as, uh, you guys collect your things down your, you know final swigs you make your way outside um the leaves are now beginning to change in that auburn color as fall begins to set in there's a heavy wind that sort of brushes all of the leaves on the cobblestone pavement you know <coughs> pattering across um Tybalt, out of the corner of your vision, you're able to see this black Kenku that was just there, Rat, making their way towards um, what appears to be a central building in Longby. I follow, taking in the scenery, because I didn't get to do this when I got here. I was kind of just rushing in. I take in the scenery. You can see, uh, you can see a few, a few of the. Uh, citizens and even some of the refugees um, sort of placing different banners on some of the buildings around um, with various different colors you know from one end of the banner to the other starting from a green changing to a red orange blue yellow and pink Okay. Various different tapestries of the colors, as you can infer, representing the champions. The closer you get to City Hall, you uh, as you guys make your way towards City Hall. Damn, they didn't waste any fucking time. Mm-hmm. Rat, mm-hmm. Rat opens the door uh, for you as as uh, as they bow, letting you guys in. I, since I got out first, and I'll walk in first, but I'll kind of go to a corner adjacent from the group. And I'll just stand in the back quietly with my hands kind of folded. Or kind of like in my robe. Sleeves. Everybody make their way inside. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, At the inside, you can see Pumia. Um, what uh, what what appears to be talking to um, a few individuals. Um, one of them in particular seems to be Ozog. Uh, Ozog and a few other Nevisaran refugees, um, apparently just talking terms. You see that Pumia is looking one way while Ozog is is in another. Very interesting. So in in creating this new tavern in whatever you want to call it, you would rather it be in this building rather than the smaller one? Uh, yeah, y- yes ma'am. It, the, considering that there are so many people, the a inn or a tavern is a central place where everybody can cool their heads in these trying times. Very well. You you know your business better than I do. Have at it. If you need anything, let me know. And if you would excuse me, I believe the champions are here. Ozog sort of bows towards Pumia, turns and makes note of you guys. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm glad to see everybody's... Uh, everybody... Made it okay. I'm, uh... I'm really sorry. I guess I'll see you guys later. Ozog makes his way out of City Hall. Pumia sits before you. I understand that the majority of you may want to have a day to yourselves. And by all means, I believe you've earned the right 
as well as this. Grabs a pouch. It plops onto the table with the classic ringing of a shit ton of gold. Ooh. Ooh. Now, I'm sure I do not need to remind you on what else needs to be done. While we have found a new place where the majority of the refugees can go, Credo has sustained much damage between the gnolls and, you know, when the veil was there. We still have to make sure the housing situation is well under check and as well make sure we can have everybody well fed. Do you have any idea on which situation you're fit to tackle? You said we're tackling any more problems. Well, I, um, assumed since you risked so much for us already that you wouldn't leave us hanging. Yeah, but you could ask instead of just, you know, expecting. With so many... We risked a lot. And we lost someone. I almost died, like, twice. These are all correct Sorry. facts. Yep. We can help out, but we're not sol- we, we're not gonna say we're gonna solve your problem. The people of this town have to figure out their own shit. We're not gonna be the lords of your town. At least I don't feel like being- I was insensitive. I apologize. When it comes to loss of a loved one, I unfortunately empathize with your situation. I had a daughter not that long ago. Um, you are all obviously free agents. Nobody asked you to be here. You just happened to be here. And you decided to give us a helping hand of which we are eternally grateful for your service. But it is not just us. The majority of the people from Nevisera came here, and we're left to deal with them ourselves. We are very much spread thin, and from what I see, you are the most capable and qualified people in order to help what is going on and what may come in the future. As I don't want to look at a gift horse in the mouth, I... It's hard to let a good thing go. But if you wish to part ways, I completely understand after what you've been through. Just know there's a lot of people who need you. What are the other things you need help? Even with Credo saved, there's still not enough roofs over people's heads in order to safely shelter them. Nor keep their bellies full. Supply chains were cut off from Silent Bell for... supplies to rebuild these homes. And our supplies from Green Rest has as well halted. Our main supply routes for food came from Green's Rest. However, I completely respect your decision if you wish to walk away. I'm not going to speak for the rest of my friends here, but I feel like we could at least discuss it. I... Uh, I think we should maybe huddle, do a side huddle, because uh, it sounds like a lot that we're being asked for. Yeah. Shelter, providing food... Yeah, a lot I'm of looking politics at, I'm looking, that yeah. like I'm looking at the quest log right now. So uh Yeah, there's housing, getting us a quest stuff. log? Yeah, Janny made a quest log. Uh, Where? Uh, it's in the, it's in announcements. Yeah, it's in announcements. 
It's an oh, announcement shit. for Gardens of Redon. Wow. So yeah, it's like, over the past week, Long B has been harboring refugees. Yeah, yada, yada. Uh, so basically, like, going to Silent Bell and getting the supplies for housing. Or going to Green's Rest, killing the Grove there, and uh, essentially re restoring uh, trade of food and essential food items uh, to Credo. Pumia what? sort of stands back up. As I said before, the day is yours. However, if whatever consensus the champions come to, we will understand completely. We will not squander the help that you have already given our free city. Thank you again. Please take this as a token of our appreciation. The day is yours. Um, if you will excuse me, I do have uh, other members to speak to, so you are free to go. The bag. You said it's just a bag. Gold. As soon as, you, as soon as you look into the gold, you can make a rough estimation that in total there is, you know, on the lower end of 600 gold in it. Okay. I've known you for a good portion of my life, Pumia. Honestly, I don't I'll try not to leave you hanging. But I can't make promises for five or six other people. If situations were different, it was good to hear you again. We'll let you know what this consent what we what we decide. You know where I'll be, if not here at the apothecary. Uh, Tybalt, a word, please. Yes, by all means. And I walk over past the group to Pumia. If I could have a private conversation with Tybalt, please. Yeah. By all means. I look at everyone else. Uh, wherever you all go, I'll, uh, I will meet with you soon. We want to go back to uh, Azog's. Yeah. And there's, and there's six of us, so 600 divided by six is obviously 100 gold per person. Minus Alex, of course, because his character died. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he's up, put, put some gold coins on Bell's ears, eyes. <laughs> okay, man, yeah, I don't, I don't fairy think, man. I don't think Tim <laughs> took any damage from that. Uh, he's down. He's <laughs> down. Uh, I'm uh, which is that's not what your mom said. Uh, hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he comes back. Uh, remember. No, Valzir from the dead. Ooh, get fucked, asshole. <laughs> this, oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> oh. Um, remember, Ozog <laughs> is sort of spearheading the, the rebuilding of the tavern slash inn at Credo. But, um, Wait, are they in Long B or are they? Are we in Long B or are they? We're in are we in, we are uh, in Long B? We're in Long B right now. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're in Long B. I thought we were in Credo the whole time. No, no, we're in Long B right now. So oh, I teleported okay. them back oh. to Long B. Okay. No, no, no. So no, you teleported us to Credo, and then yeah, you we guys, all yeah, traveled. You, traveled to Long B. you guys got teleported to Credo. You guys took a trek on over to Long B. Had a long rest, you know, in beds at the Bone Inn. Oh, what? Got you, okay. The following okay. day, here we are. I don't remember traveling. We did that, you know. Just, just, just. Nice, a, nice happy easy, little time to get. Oh, okay. Never mind, I remember traveling. It was a fun experience. <laughs> well, I know there's one thing I would like to do. I would like to, uh, haven't thought about it for a while. I would like to go see how RJ is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, go right, RJ's not with us. Yeah, he was not with us uh, because uh, I was in great danger of the possibility of losing him in the veil, like I, like I did where his rope got cut from my belt in uh, Heritage right. Conclave. Yeah, no. So, so, but also, RJ. like. He's get uh, he's getting a new body, and I I kind of want to go and uh, see how that's coming along. So, 
Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Uh, I, I, I am assuming everybody um, sort of makes their way out of City Hall to sort of disperse, take the day in for, for themselves. Yeah, I want to find a place to do target practice. And then I also want to ask um, Sage if she wants to come with me. Um, Sage just kind of responds like, yeah, I can shoot some guns and just kind of slings her rifle over her shoulders like, I'm ready to take out some rage. Uh, Alright, never mind, that's a bit scary, but you can still come along. <laughs> I, how am I supposed to become a proficient shooter if I don't learn how to shoot a gun better? Oh, then don't sling it on your shoulder. That's You could shoot somebody behind you. I guess I could Okay, go. and then I point my gun down to the ground, like a safe person. There you person. go. Oh, well, we're here, we should. We need to go over to Prime World. Alright. Can, uh, can you do a history? Aw, oh, look at Tibble. Me do a history check? Actually, Ghost and Sage. Oh, great. Uh... Whammies! 18. Dirty 20. You remember at the, uh... Both of you sort of remember along the tip of the Long Bee Peninsula. Um, when you guys, you know, were teleported onto the beach right after... Right after Nevasera, you remembered that there was a lighthouse sort of at mm -hmm. the edge of the peninsula with a few birds, you know, encompassing it. If there's, if there's target practice, that's a good shoot thing. the goals. Let's go shoot some birds. Hey man, if it gets dinner on the table too, I'm all for it. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll we're gonna go do target practice. Danny, I also want to go visit with Eula, also, since, I, since I've only gotten to see her once. With Eula? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, with Eula. Okay. So uh, yeah, those two, those, two main oh. thing, those two main things were planted. Um, Degeo, Sonaris, Day, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Big question. Sonaris, Sonaris on a drunken what bender. what do you want to do? <laughs> Sonaris on a drunken bender. Uh... I so too want to get plastered. Oh my god! You want to get plastered? But let's get plastered. I'll get plastered right, also. Uh, no, 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 no ability to make Maybe. decisions whatsoever. Just all three of us let's get plastered. Fun. All three of us need to get plastered because I I don't back, know back to the bone in to continue. continue Drink your sorrows away. Into that It'll help make the days pass while I'm here. Mm -hmm. Wow, the three people of us here like had a heart to heart with, and are just drinking away. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, All equally. It's almost damaged. like there might be a reason. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard enough life. You just hear a uh, fucking uh, juice world in the background, just like <laughs> fucking sad boy up. <laughs> oh, shadows in my room. <laughs> Okay, so, Sage and Ghost, you know, take their guns, and they're making their trek uh, along the beach towards the lighthouse. Hunting uh, time. <laughs> uh, Sonaris, the Gayo, and Day are making their way back to the Bone-In to um, continue in the subduing of their feelings. Um... Unhealthy coping mechanism. Unhealthy coping mechanisms. What up? Unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Glanton is going to make a few uh, pit stops along the way. Um, as you guys exit City Hall, um, Pumia sort of stands up mm -hmm. near Tybalt. You had a interesting morning with them, I can only assume. Interesting as a... Uh... Is a term, yes. I am assuming they are extremely pensive with your presence. Rightly so. I mean, they did lose a companion of theirs. I mean, they're not too keen on my interests, but I understand why. It's only human. Or humanoid, I guess. I believe what they need right now is somebody who can help them mainly with tasks that require multiple hands. I 
don't believe what they need now, for lack of a better term, is a replacement. They are actively grieving. Their minds are elsewhere. I understand. Give them the space that they require, and in turn, I'm sure they'll accept you with open arms. But right now, I can see in their eyes they are just volatile. I... I came here because the council told me to. I was simply just... Not as an errand boy, but more so as a uh, intermediary between the council and the champions. I, I'm not expecting them to immediately grow a friendship with me. I don't, and honestly, it doesn't hurt me if they don't want to ever. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here for my own research. I'm here for them to help me as well. I'll give them the space, I don't mind. It's just... Time is of the essence. And I'm also on a short, short clock. Following them will definitely give you ample opportunity to continue your work. No doubt about that. Who knows? You might find something else along their companionship as well. Just have an open mind. I will try. Is there anything further you want from me, ma'am? The day is yours, Professor Todd. You do what you wish. I nod and I, uh... I walk out of City Hall. Kind of notice everyone, like, sparsely going where they're going. I I look at the three going towards the end and I look... You know, I see Glanton go off. I see Sage and, uh, Ghost go off. I, uh, I kind of like, I kind of pat my shoulder and Winston comes out and I look at him where do you want to go? because I'm at a loss and I don't know who is going to be more easy to bond with and I kind of like, I say that almost disgusted, I'm just like, or like bothered, I'm just like uh, you, see, you see that you see that Winston like almost crackles his neck and looks towards the hunking metal mass of Glanton <laughs> and turns back. <laughs> How did I know? I look at <laughs> Winston and I'm like I mean he did seem to be the one that was most leveled. He cocks, what you get for being polite? He he cocks his <laughs> he cocks his head. I <laughs> I guess we go where Glanton goes. And I, uh... I, guess so. I snap my fingers and I'll make Winston go back into my cloak. He, uh, he scuttles back. I start following Glanton, but from a distance. Speaking of which, Glanton, where do you want to go first? Do you want to go... Do you, uh, do you want to go to the Crowbar Artificers, or do you want to go to the Oak Fair Piers? Uh, let's go to Crowbar first, to, just to to get that out of the way. I, I have I have been rather neglectful of of RJ over the past couple sessions. I actually don't remember like what state I left him in upon leaving for the Vale, though. I know I like bartered with the owner there, mm -hmm. like t like telling her about uh, building him a new a new body, but. Yeah. Uh, I uh, can't remember if the building process has already started because I did say at, at one point I wanted to at least be a part of it, you know, like help out with the process, like apply my, like apply my services. How we decided on doing that. I think it was if you assisted her every... I think it's if you assisted her every day, you would... Basically doing three long rests with her cut the price of making RJ's endoskeleton in half but you would have to spend three long rests with her like at the at crowbars I see 
I mean, I'll still head over there to to ch- to uh, check on things because who who knows? I may like there, I may not get a chance to spend three long breaths at, at at the crowbar the bit based on uh, based on everybody else's decision. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head over there and see how things are doing. Okay, as soon as you uh, make your way over on the inside, you can see uh, Nostin. Algarath, sort of just knee deep inside the bowels of this automatic carriage. You can see that she's just trying to like reach down. However, her wrench sort of falls under the carriage. Oh, god damn it! I go over and and reach down underneath the vehicle, and I and I retrieve the wrench for her. Oh, thank you kindly. You are welcome, Nostin. She sort of pulls herself out of the uh, out of the bay. Oh, well, that was some fine piece of work you guys made on over at the Vale. Thank you again so much for for everything you've done. This little doohickey that you got here, the RJ, he has been an absolute hoot. Greetings. Glanton, so lovely to see you again. He's sort of sitting just like in the corner of a of a table, just watching Austin fix this automatic carriage. I, I go I go up to him and say, Hello, RJ. Did you it know, is Did you know that these automatic carriages are actually powered by momentum? Interesting. Indeed it is. How are you, RJ? I have not seen you for a, a for quite some time since heading in, since heading into the Vale. Not many not times me. have I been experienced or shown Artificer shops. This indeed would be an excellent addition to the encyclopedia. I enjoy Nasen's companionship immeasurably. That is pleasant to hear. All right. Un- unfortunately, I just haven't had you know time to be able to you know start putting you know pen to paper however i did get some of the parts that we need in order to you know make the make the chest frame for our friend over here come on take a look just sort of brings you on over to this corner of the shop where you can see just various pieces of elven warforged parts sort of scattered about had a buddy over at corota zone uh over at bay mw ship these on over they just got here a few days ago. I, I like look. I like look at these parts, and I see. I see, uh, like the quality that they're in. Like I remember BMW. That's for that's that's for sure. Um, <laughs> but Glanton's not going to bring that up. Um, I, I said, uh, yeah. I just look. I just look at them like like inspecting them a little a little bit. Uh, like I know that her word on like the the, the parts being good and new is true. J- just uh, it, it's just the uh, the blacksmith in me, I guess. Like like make, make sure that they are actual good pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, with with your history with blacksmithing, investigation check with advantage. Okay. Let's see if these uh, parts are up to snuff. Twenty three. Twenty three. Generally. You're you're able to see the, the the remnants of a forearm. This forearm, however, seems to be laced with a uh, with a unique type of webbing from, let's say, probably an old compatriot of yours who had the ability to cast web. Uh, you can as well see a bullet hole on what appears to be the left clavicle you can as well see a like fully functional right arm however this right arm seems to be very similar to the one that you spotted specifically in the oasis during the um, during the boar uprising a particular warforged hand that you as well saw in the basement of BMW. 
these parts will do just fine. Yeah, that... Uh... So I recognize all those things, like all these flashes of, cro- of Chronozone, like during that time, like kind of come back, to, come back to me a little bit. Um, sad times of what, of the Crusaders and their heyday, as it were. Um, but but I but I do but I do see that the, the part I do see that the parts are good. It is like, yes, these will do quite nicely. Uh, I, I've never really built a, a warforged before. Mind if I ask you some questions about it first off? Ask away. So when it when it comes to actually, you know, connecting the head to the base of the of the collarbone, I, I, I'm not seeing any kind of, you know, easy a, a universal bracket system in order for me to put everything in. You may have experience. How 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 were you able to remove RJ's head, you know, from from its original frame? From what I recall from his construction, his head was already rem- was already removable in in the first place, as he had multiple bodies with multiple uses. But his but his head simply turned and was screwed into position. Okay. So, so it seems to be an inlet screw. Then, okay, okay, I, I, I can, I can finesse something with that. Thank you, Clanton, very much. Uh, you are welcome. I'm probably gonna go ahead and, and uh, you know, put the lamp on and start getting to work on the frame first. The last thing I'm gonna do is put RJ on it. Um, if you, if you got some time and you want to help, by all means, I'll be doing this all night. There are some things that I must attend to today, but I will. Def- I will most definitely make sure to be he- to be here and help you if I-, I am available to do so. All right. Well, see you soon. I'm going to get a crack and smack you to it. I'll see you in a bit, I guess. Thank you, Nostin. Glanton. Yes, RJ. Before you go, I wanted to ask, how was the veil? As beautiful, incredible... And strange, as I remember, there are so many wondrous things w- within, yet at the same time, unsettling and grotesque, su- such as, as soon as we were entering, we came across a very strange deer with what appeared to be the legs of a spider for in the place of its antlers. Oh my goodness! It, it, was all, it also had multiple colors along its fur as well. I wish I could have been there. As do I. But I could not take the chances of accidentally losing you within the veil as what as what happened in Heretic's Conclave. He can't express because he's literally just a head being put to the side on a mantle, so he kind of just stares blankly. <laughs> Uh, as soon as you finish that conversation, Tybalt makes his way inside. I actually was wanting to just stay outside and wait for him to exit. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, you can see that Tybalt's sort of shadow blocks a little bit of the of the sun that's peering in from the from the doorway. I, I, I notice this when I look back. Easily, you can see Tibble outside the door. I'm just kind of looking in, and then looking away. Uh, I I say to both Nasin and RJ, I will be back later tonight to to help with the construction process. All right, sounds good to me. Until then, Glanton. I will see you both soon, and I start making my way towards the door. As soon as you, uh, as soon as you come out of the door, you are greeted by Tybalt. Hello. Hello, Tybalt. I was not expecting you to be o- over in this part of town. I, I was just browsing. I, I um, and I just kind of looked, looked down at the ground. Um, so, so what, are, what are you up to today? I am taking care of a, of a few. 
errands, as it were. So, something, something that I started, a project that I helped fund before going into the Vale, and I was seeing how the process was going. And was it satisfactory? Indeed. In fact, I am heading back in later tonight to to apply my services. Oh, well, I figure I might try to learn everyone a little bit better, and you and me seem to have a good rapport. So I was wondering if I could just join you on your errands. I see nothing wrong with that. You, you, if you wish to accompany me. You m most certainly can. All right. Well, uh, lead the way then. I leave the uh, the crowbar and I head towards the I head towards the docks. Okay. Oak Fair docks are not that far away. Um, you can actually see Rat and Eula sort of bringing in the uh, the ship that took you guys uh, to to Credo not that long ago. Um, you can see that there are some people from Credo uh, and people from Long B, you know, exchanging materials, you know, spreading everything equally across between the two, um, the two locations. Um, it is very difficult to, you know, not notice your footsteps on the cobblestone as Eula turns around. Oh, Glanton, I'm so glad you're okay. The little halfling comes on over and just hugs your fucking knees. Uh, so, like, I do my best to bend over and hug her back while she's, while she's, while she's in that, like, putting me a rather awkward, awkward position of, like, just leaning forward. She, uh, it's like, she, she, uh, she goes back and sort of just, like, Punches your thigh. You had me worried sick going into the veil like that. I'm so glad you're okay. And I also. I. It is very good to see you again after, after all all that has transpired. Hey, again, like I said before, my place is totally up for grabs. If you and the champions need, you know, need a place to stay. If you want to get, you know, out of the inn. There's a home here for you. Appear behind Glanton at the halfling. I like stick my head out and look down. And I have my cold stare looking at the halfling. Glanton, Eula is actively kind of almost <laughs> ripping you a new one for being so stupid to go into the veil. But Again, I'm staring at Eula from over his shoulder. Oh, right. Planted a. Who the hell is this guy? Oh, where are my manners? Eula, this is Tybalt. We recently met in Credo. I Tybalt. hold myself kind of stiff as I look down at Eula. He hello, Tybalt. This is my friend Eula. We have known each other for quite some time, and she and she has helped me in recent years. Uh, Eula sort of uh, moves her small hand uh, towards Tybalt. Eula T. Rabbit. Pleasure I, to meet you. I put my hand forward, not reluctantly, but put my hand forward, and as I put my hand and touch hers, uh, Winston comes out of my sleeve. Jesus! Uh, it, uh, it, he, he won't hurt you, I promise. He's just saying hello. This is, uh, this is Winston. You feed the thing? Yeah. Eat. Like any other being. It's a it's a it's a skeleton, my man. Yeah, skeletons have to be too, I guess. <laughs> oh my god, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, fair enough, I guess. I, and I, I shake I, her hand I, and I I I can't combat the skeletons go to eat too, you know. Fucking hell. I, I, they, I amic at, uh, they, they amicably uh, shake. Winston, Winston will pat her hand while I'm shaking, and just like pat, pat, and then climb back up my shoulder. <sighs> well, um, Glanton, uh, Tibble, what a uh, what brings you on, on over to the docks? You trying to get to fast track to Credo? Not 
quite yet. I, for one thing, I simply wanted to stop by and say hello, and and possibly may, maybe help maybe help a little bit in in, ter, in terms of get uh, in terms of people or supplies and having it moved. Oh no no no! You 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 don't have to help out at all. Meanwhile, rats over on the other end. Crate heavy up ship, please. The, like I, the, I, I look at her and I look at her and I nod and, and I look back at Eula. I, I just, <sighs> she did ask rather politely, knock. and and I go and I go over and, and help Rat with the crate. Yeah, not not knock yourself out, Tin Man. You can see Eula sort of. <laughs> I kind of just. <laughs> I stand there awkwardly and look at like them just carrying crates. I'm. I, I suppose I could help. And I... I roll up my sleeves and, like, you see on my arms, it's the silver, but there's, like, um... I would say there's, like, markings on my arms where the scales don't meet. And on, like, the smooth skin, there's small indentations of uh, runes. And other like scratches um, on my left arm. You see, st- it looks very fresh, very hastily stitched slices f- on my arms, where I've drawn my own blood for research. Like I've I've used myself as a guinea pig. Like I've tried to like, and I just stitch them back up. And I'm just like I look like that and I um I go over and even in my robes I just without even trying pick up one of the crates like it's nothing and heave it on my shoulder uh Glanton you notice that these are heavy ass crates the fact that he's able to pick it up is very very surprising you appear to be stronger than you look Tybalt I used to do a lot of stalking back at my parents shop and I just throw it put it on and I grab another one armed put it uh Eula walks on over well since you seem to be a pretty big boy chalks over a sack of potatoes at you make a strength check me? yes okay <laughs> nat 20 <laughs> not not <laughs> Not, not only are you able to hold the uh, the 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 box, mm. you grab the sack of potatoes and put it on top of the box without the bag ripping whatsoever. That's amazing. Yeah. I appreciate a challenge, but could you not do that again, please? I'll, I'll appreciate any help I can get, Glanton. Uh, I am uh, right. I. I that I, I, I know. I said, yes, I do. All right, good. I finally got some good honest help around here. All I, right. I look. I set down the potato sack in the box. I look at Glanton. No, I haven't done this since I was a schoolboy. But would you like to have a little competition? <laughs> I'm always one for a friendly little game. What did you have in mind? very simple. We're both strong individuals. I figure we test that. The fast whoever gets the most boxes loaded wins. Winner buys a drink. That seems fair. Is there a time limit? Uh, I snap. Winston comes out. Winston, if you could please, uh, Keep track of three minutes. You see that Winston... And what he will do is... Oh, go ahead. He will... on one Because we're at a dock. On one of the little like, stands where the dock is, he'll stand there and he'll clap his hands in the rhythm of a second. Or like in the rhythm to a second. Like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. You can hear the ticks and the tacks of his little hands just... Time starts, and I point to Winston now, and I grab two big crates. I 
I I do I do the same. I also grab I also grab two. Both of you guys, three sets of strength checks. Uh, strength checks. Okay. Uh, first one is a fifteen. Um, that is twenty-three. You, you said typical yours was what again? A fifteen. Fifteen. Glanton is able to make it to the uh, dock with his crate first. Okay, I set mine second. I go back and grab four, two on either side. I make an attempt at do at doing that same thing. Right. Make make making sh making sure that everything is balanced and all, of course. Twenty four. Also twenty four. You guys make it both at the dock at the same time. Glanton still with the lead. I see in my pile. How many boxes do I see in my pile left? In total, you see like ten left. Same goes for me. I want to yeah. do this. I want to take two at a time, and from the distance of where the boxes are to where they're loaded, toss them, but not to break them, and stack them in such a way <laughs> as well. Glanton. Do you raise or do you fold? Um, I don't think Glanton would be as 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 risky as that. Um, I mean, I could. I mean, I could try. I could try to. I could try to call on, on that. See, see how it goes. I just don't want to escalate escalate okay. too 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 much to okay. where things do accidentally break. Get broken. I, yeah. I, uh, okay. So. <laughs> Tibble, because you are trying something very risky, strength, disadvantage. Glanton, regular because you're being conservative. 21. Oh, that was a net 20. Ha! P plus, plus four, plus proficiency, so that's, that's a total of 28. Oh! oh! So, 21. so... So, Tibble is generally sort of successful in placing the remainder of all of his crates in a organized, like, pyramid pattern stacked, I'm playing on, Tetris. Top, <laughs> stacked on top of each other, whereas Glanton is able to just plant his feet onto the ground and just push all of them <laughs> at once. <laughs> Glanton wins. I uh, hold my hand out for Winston. Winston crawls back up into my robe. You're quite a specimen. Congratulations on your win. And I take a deep breath. And I stretch. I haven't done that in quite some... Oh, and my back pops in my... Oh, in quite some time. Take two uh, piercing damage? Mm, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I quite liked that, that competition. It has been many years since I have actively played a game of any kind. Listen, I'm not a stick in the mud. I do enjoy the pleasantries of life sometimes. We have to find happiness somewhere. I wholeheartedly agree. I guess I owe you that drink then. I, oh. however, do not drink. I... D does that complicate things? Is there anything you would like of monetary value I don't mind helping with? You do not need to do that. You can keep your money. Fine. I'll, uh... You get an honorary IOU. <laughs> Very at, well. As time progresses, um, who here has a D2? That's funny. Um, oh, wow. Uh, okay. Right. Right. On, only Athena does. I, have it. I don't have to have it. I don't think I have, I have it. Coins, everybody, and I everybody, have, everybody else has a coin. I have a quarter. Like, I got actually a bunch more D2s, but this is the one that I'm using. Considering that we I never, considering that yeah. we never get to use the D two, I would say, also use these coins. I would say 
Sage and um, Ghost, one. Sonaris, the Geo, day two. Who do we go to next? Is it best? Big is it best to, nah, like just, best draw three. Nah, just this one. That is a uh, two. That is a two. We're going to the bar. Changing, changing of perspective. <laughs> Into the Bone Inn Tavern, you can see that there has been a collection of bottles and cups sort of stacked on top of each other next to the Gayo, Sonaris, and Day. I would like all three of you to please roll Constitution <laughs> saving throws <laughs> at disadvantage. Oh, oh no. Are they oh, fucking no. flat? What I'm they're, they're trying. Sean, they're actually Sean is trying getting, to be. Sean is getting flashbacks from Crow's Chapel. No, he doesn't. They're not. He doesn't get. He, he doesn't get poisoned. He just. I hope this shit ain't poisoned. Poison already drank. I'm Eleven. That is a nineteen. <gasps> disadvantage. Disadvantage is my disadvantage. Nice. Okay. Um, one of the dice are rolled was the dash Me, twenty. Me, Gale so is not a lightweight. <laughs> okay, she's so, a pro- she's a Goliath. She is most definitely not a lightweight. Just like in real life, I'm a lightweight. <laughs> uh, Sonaris, what did you roll? One of my dice was a natural twenty, but I can't oh, use that one. Unfortunate. Oh, unfortunate. The other one is a twenty-two. The other one was a twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have me, to go with the natural lightweight. Just like in no. real So, day? If I'd gotten a natural 20, oh, I would have got I got 22. Oh. Day, what was yours again? 11. Degeo, Sonaris, you are keeping your composures together while day is slobbering, unfortunately. Oh, it's just like real life. Oh my god. Okay. I need another couple rounds. Oh, no. Uh, the 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 bar the bartender who's named Yuri, by the way, Y I R I. Um, Yuri sort of starts to you know keep off the pressure on day. I, I think she may have had enough. Do you think? No, don't ever have uh, enough. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna stop <laughs> her. Money more. more. I'm not gonna stop her. She can have as much as she wants. Hey, um, bartender, cut her off. No. <laughs> Don't cut me off. Uh, no, not. you need to be cut off, kid. Um, well, uh, this is a, this is my bar. I uh, I feel like um. He pulls out a little keg of uh, of water. I made this uh, a few a few nights ago. A little bit of a moonshine, courtesy of old you, uh, boy. Here you uh, go. Try that. Uh, How does it taste? Like water. <laughs> uh, I guess do a uh, I guess do a, a survival check to see what it uh, what it tastes oh, like. Oh god. Oh god. Moonshine. Normally, there's a phrase. That it's it burns like Twelve. hell, but it tastes like heaven. That's, Twelve. That's that's yeah. usual phrase. That's usual thing for moonshine. Uh, this this uh this water painted as moonshine goes down incredibly smooth. You enjoy it. It's nice. Smooth. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Here I have. A... I'll keep him coming. He kind of looks on over to to uh, to the gay and sort of winks his bird eye. T- Towards her. I don't want some moonshine now. I Dude, have some. my dad gave me a bunch of moonshine. I still have in the fridge. I, 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 I still I still have some. Uh, I went to the moonshine festival like last year, and I got myself a bottle of apple pie moonshine. That, this that is I've like been, I've been. The stuff I have is actually I've, moonshine. I've been uh, I've been like slowly slowly sipping yeah. on. It's like, it's like a banana pudding, pudding one. Oh no! Never banana pudding. Again. Ooh, so good. I, there was also oh, margarita. Never that again. I, I've, I've had a margarita like except instead of tequila, it was moonshine. It was called a moonarita. Yeah. What the hell? But it was like margarita flavored moonshine, and then there's also pickled moonshine, which is good. 
I love pickles. I yes. just need to get myself some more to, to some more moonshine, but I, I still have the apple pie, uh, so I'm gonna stick with that for a little bit. I can't drink for like a year. Oh, I'm so, I'm so stuck. sorry. It's okay. What? Yeah. You can't drink for a after, year. After that cutoff yeah. is over, <laughs> if I still have some, I will I will bring you some. some no, moonshine. we're going to. Okay. <laughs> what was the date of your surgery again? What March the fuck? March 2nd? Mm -hmm. okay. So, March 2nd, so, 2023, I can try alcohol again. March 2nd, 2023. Alright, I'm putting that in my phone. Anyway, back to d, &D. I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking into that banana pudding munch, moonshine, though. That sounds fucking dope as hell. Yeah, really Old does. Smoky Mountain uh, moonshine in, like, He's doing... They're doing the DM fingers. So, like... Sorry, last last thing and then we can continue. Like for five dollars for like five dollars if you go to their like store in Tennessee, they'll let you try like the clear one, the banana pudding, they have an apple pie one as well. Like it's so good, but then they also have deals where like buy two, you get this free little cooler, stuff like that. So Alright, I'm done talking about moonshine. Okay. I'm done flipping off people, I'm sorry. <laughs> back to uh back to Getting drunk. <laughs> Where were we? Yes, as as one does. Um, you guys have the bar to yourselves. As um, I hate that name. um, Sonaris, do me a favor, and what is your passive perception? The seventeen. Seventeen. <clears throat> In the corner of the bar, um, you see a uh, a sort of purple, pale skinned tiefling. Sort of in the corner. She kind of scoops you. She makes she, eyes. She, oh, she, never mind. She, she scowls at you. Why do I think I know this individual? She's I like, do. I <laughs> Make a history check. I love as Dave this is a term, like she's what kind of individual she was. She is she it, an it, owl. It, 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 well, well, what's your well? But it is a. Uh, it, 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 it is a. I'm like, oh, shut up now. But, I, know, a, but it, I remember who this it, is. It, it, it's a pale purple tiefling. Um, Sonaris, if you straight up already, like, if you remember, no history check required. Yeah. Okay. I rolled a 14, but I'm pretty, like, I, I, I'm, like, pretty sure. If you know, you're good. Yeah. I, I, think, I think I might know who it is also. She's giving yeah. you the eye. But I'm man. not there, so. She's looking at you like, you, you shit. I look back at her. <laughs> And I kind of yeah, I I, give I, know, the, I know who this is. The head like the head nod. Oh, we give nods now. All right, head <laughs> nod. Um, you know, you can see that her 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 knuckles turn white as she sort of just squeezes her hand. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. You, you in trouble, bro? So what do I know? I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> like day, is, day, are, are day, they, are day, they day, just talking to herself? Day right for all the tourists and purposes. Hey, my friend thinks you're cute. <laughs> Yo. Are they sitting over there alone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just alone. <laughs> I'll be right back. And I'll get up. And I'll walk over. As soon as you walk over, you can see that her face now turns over to the side. Taking yeah, my she, drink with me, of course. She, uh, she, she doesn't move, but instead of now like actively looking at you, she sort of just turns around, crosses her, crosses her legs, and drinks to her continuing solidarity. I'll sit down uh, across from from them as she. Uh, yeah. As she uh, drinks down. So you're just gonna keep drinking over here, or are you gonna say hello? Who are you again? I feel like that's deserved. Sarza? Sonaris. What you been up to? Nobler shit than you, I'm sure. Say that again. You heard me. Well... Um, I can see the news channel exploding right now. 
Now you know my pain oh. during fucking Withermore when you guys do it to me. <laughs> I, knew, I knew the Arthur one was coming. I knew the Arthur, the Arthur, Arthur was coming. Clunch. I have to. I have to. God, I have to. I, I knew the Arthur one was coming. It's, I have, I to, I have to turn I away. Have to. <laughs> I'm, uh... Memes are my love language. <laughs> I... I know I left very... abruptly. <laughs> I... should've said something. I sh should've done a lot of things. And I, uh... Apologize for whatever that's worth. But I had a reason. And whether you know that or not isn't of any concern anymore. Whether you want to admit it or not, as soon as you left, this place changed. As soon as you left, she was missing too. How do you think that resonated with everybody? With her father? You left me and you left V. You left everybody without any preconceived notion of what you, what you may have did. I didn't do anything. And that's part of the problem. Not mine anymore. You made your choice. You get to live with it. Every day. Tough shit, buddy. That's rough, buddy. That's rough, man. Would you like to know what happened that night? No. I actually don't. I don't need you to paint me a pretty little story about how you two may have, you know, sailed the seven seas together or something more unfortunate. I don't want to know what really happened. The end result's still the same. Whatever you did or what happened for leaving, you're a bastard. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Damn, somebody pissed somebody off. Damn. I loved her more than anyone. That night I lost her. I didn't know what to do. I just did what I felt like I had to. Because if I had returned to town and she was gone, I could have been home. Some would say that's probably still the best Good. alternative. Those people would oh, not be yeah. wrong. But it's whatever. You... Go on, keep having your adventures if you haven't had your fill yet. One day it'll get you killed. That's good enough for me. I'll, uh, get up. It was nice talking to you, Sartre. I wish things could have been different. Obviously, if you need anything, I'm still here. Or at least, until I die. But if you don't want to speak to me again, that's fine. V seems to sing a different tune. But if you don't want to ever forgive me, that's fine. We'll go our separate ways. Once we leave Long Beer or help the situation here, I'm probably not going to come back. Or at least until I find her. I think she's still alive. And I'm getting close. It's what I've been doing since I left. 
you live a good life. I'll drink the rest of my drink, I'll put it down on the table, and I'll walk away. She uh, stays looking at the glass that you left behind with no additional response. You turn back to um, see the Gayo and Day sort of looking over their looking over their shoulders as they were able to more or less almost eavesdrop on the situation. I'm assuming I'll sit back home at the table. You return. Oh, uh, you good there? Yeah. Did you like the show? <laughs> I'll uh, take another. I'll I'll make myself another drink. Ask for another drink. Yuri's like. I, I'm I'm very drunk, so I'm just going to assume I, I, it was all a dream. And I didn't think, didn't hear that. Oh cool. yeah, yeah. Day, you you probably weren't able to get, you know. Yeah. Hey, good good context. He, like he get he just gets back. Yeah. Hey, Sonoris, you speak go over talk to that sexy yeah. girl over there. Are you two gonna go out on a date? <laughs> Did you get her number? <laughs> <laughs> She's an old friend. Friend? Quotation marks? Well, in quotation marks now. Oh. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, shit. Guys. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Get it. Turn up. <laughs> Listen. Shoot your shot, my dude. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. Fuck it up. Hell yeah. It ain't like that. What? No? The hell? What even? He might get good, you know. A nice lad who's got his head on straight, maybe. At least as far as what I can tell. I mean... Hell, fuck it up. Oh my god, Anna. Maybe? Maybe he has it on straight? I don't know. What do I know? My head hasn't been That's on straight it. for years. <laughs> you can go all in, I think you can do it, but just don't do it if you're related. Oh, what the fuck? Are you sure I'm not the one who's drunk here? Uh, the Gayo, that is a good point. Tegeo, you have been consistently drinking. Please, uh, constitution fuck. saving throw, again, at Please disadvantage. Be drunk with me. Be drunk with me. Be drunk with me. Twenty. So dirty twenty is my disadvantage. Oh my it's Damn. worse because she's completely sober. Oh my god! <laughs> Damn it! The go. Okay. You seem fine. Um, <laughs> these drinks don't seem to be doing it, do they? Huh? <laughs> so you need to just keep them drinking. Oh, I mean, I'm she's so dumb. Oh. <laughs> Listen, when Listen, you're we're both I'm still just sober. built different, you should do a drinking I'm game. built different, Sonaris, okay? Do you see these guys? Jesus fucking Chad, dog. Leave her alone. <laughs> you should do uh, a drinking <laughs> You know what? I'm fucking down. I'm gonna race you right now. And then I like throw my glass down to onto the bar and like and I like, just like chug oh, it. Oh god, what is like, happening? Get it up, bartender. Uh, Yuri, Yuri makes his way. Hold on, I, I I got the best kind of game. Um, you give me your shot glasses. I'm kind of running out. All right, here we go. Oh, sort, you guys, what's happening? He sort of lays <laughs> out know. all of these shot glasses uh, along the length of the bar. Yo. In total, in total, there's like, t like, twenty of them. Each one is filled with Molly Mock cider. Oh god, y'all are gonna get fucked up. Oh hell, fucking yeah, dude. Game is simple. Start at the end until you guys meet. On whichever side we end up, that person loses. Day is like in the corner going, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, goes to the take up the first glass. All right, so like as Sonaris, I'm like to Valzir. To Valzir. Oh shit, we're doing this to Valzir now. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, right, beat his fucking ready? ass. The gay old beat his fucking ass. All right. Um, All right, Danny, explain, explain you the game. Get your ass very, to very, you? very similarly to the docks. The, the, I'm just doing this. To get, uh, uh, I'm just doing this to get <laughs> fucked up. Um. So, okay, okay, right, so I, I am making this shit up as I go. Similarly to the strength race that they did, you guys are going to do constitution saves. However, you have to get at least, you know, above a 10 in order to succeed the shot. 
if you fail, you're stuck on it for one, like, constitution round. Ah, shit. Yeah. Okay? Again. Okay. Best you... of luck, motherfuckers. So, Best of luck. First shot. Sonaris, the game. Go. 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 Eight. 23. Oh, God. Sonaris <laughs> takes it like a champ. The Gao, you sort of fumble a, a like, little bit. Oh, so, and I do like the shapes. These are, these are constitution saving throws, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so that's a one for Sonaris. Round two. Okay. Oh, he's saving throws? Oh, shit, never mind. That should have been a nine. Oh, round two. No, still you fail. So, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. uh, 22. 19. Both, okay. both of you guys get one. Sonara's still in the lead. Round three. Lost this. Oh, I didn't know what the fuck happened. Uh, 15. Okay. Uh, what that be? 16? Oh, 7 plus uh, 9. Both of you guys finished their shots. Sonara's is still in the lead. Round four. 19. Cool. 25. Motherfucker! Keep going, Sonar is still in the lead. Oh, <laughs> so that you were taking everything like a champ, but then now you just you just started. 30? Oops. I gotta I rolled my next one. Yeah, so don't know. 19. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Both of you guys do it. Sonaris is still in the lead. God damn it. Might be catching up here. 14. Okay, nineteen. Uh, okay. twenty-two. Degeo, you're able, you're you're able to catch back up a little bit with Sonaris being a little bit slower. This is what round six. You guys are now tied. Ah shit. Round seven. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm that's good. bad. <sighs> Natural one plus nine. Not one. That one plus nine. Fifteen. Uh, Sonaris is now <laughs> failing it hard. Tegeo <laughs> advances to the next two shots. Tegeo <gasps> in the lead by two. Round How eight. many shots are there in total? I rolled a fourteen eight. for round eight. On, on each side there are ten. Twenty-five. To go. I rolled a 14. 14. Sonaris gains his momentum back a little bit. The Gao is still in the lead by one. She has one shot left. Sonaris, you have two. Okay. <laughs> I, I rolled my next one. <laughs> 21. The Gao. Uh, <laughs> The Gao takes the final shot, flips it over, <laughs> stamps yeah. it onto the bar. The Gao wins the drinking game. <laughs> I knew you we had it in you. You did everybody something. Good. Everybody in the bar is. Everybody in the bar is like the Gao. The Gao. You did such a good job. You did such a good job. Put my hand onto Sonara's shoulder and be like, "Look, man." You may be great. You still got some work to be the greatest. But you're Damn. not gay. Damn. 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 Settle down. It's close. Settle down, okay? Settle down, okay? <laughs> you just need to practice just a little bit. Damn. Now you everybody know. passes out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now everybody is. Well, I did this to get, get plastered in oh, I'm here. No more constitution yeah. saving throws. Everybody is at its. Bottom end blasted. Yay! Day's hey! just like. Uh, uh. <laughs> hey, good game, Sonaris. Day, Day's oh, passed out on the bar. Day the Gale Gale wakes the bar. up in an alley. Sean wakes, Sean wakes up in a bar. random person's <laughs> bed. As, a, <laughs> a, as Yuri begins to start pouring his homemade moonshine. Change of perspective. <laughs> as a as our as our resident gunslingers, Sage oh. and Ghost, 
make their way up the steps of the lighthouse. You guys are on the beach. You can see that this lighthouse is kind of not that very well maintained. There's a lot of cracks, you know, in between the, the mortar and some of the bricks themselves. It's obviously stable enough in order to, you know, be on the premises. It just doesn't look, you know, in mint condition. Um, you guys are making it up the steps. Um, as you guys are making it up the steps, you can see that directly in front of you is the great beyond, the, the, the sea beyond the borders of the actual continent itself. Sort of due west, you can sort of see the sunset beginning to take shape, as well as some gulls, you know, making their presences known across the horizon. Take gun precautions, have my gun pointed downward, um, and I'm kind of just like, all right, are we just, um, start shooting? Yes, that's typically how you do, you know, <laughs> shooting practice. All right, cool. I thought there would be, like, a little bit of, you know, second possible, you know, how are you doing? How's um, things? Uh, and I just kind of lift my gun and I start to, like, aim for some birds as I'm just, like, idly talking. Uh, I lift my gun as well and then I go, uh... Are you okay? Because when I first met you, and a god broke loose, you did nothing but scream for hours. As and, a and, and, uh, and now your friend's dead, and you haven't really done a thing, so I'm trying to figure out where your emotions lie here. As soon as, you, as, soon as a ghost asks the burning question, I would like both of you to make dexterity saving throws to see if you oh, hit oh, the de bird. Dexterity. Well, well, actually, actually, it would it wouldn't be because you're attacking something. Roll to hit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. See if you hit the AC of a fucking bird. <laughs> I mean, I have my that, hunting rifle has a plus eight to it, so I would add that. They, I would they are very small targets. Fourteen. Twenty-seven. Ghost. You Technically shoot... in that one. Well, <laughs> but I have a plus thirteen, I so mean, it becomes I mean, fourteen. In this situation, the worst thing that could happen is you miss. Yeah, but like I'm supposed to be the better shot here, so. <laughs> Ghost, you miss as Sage. If I'm not mistaken, this is one of the very... Other than, obviously, you know, the you attacking the demon and essentially enacting the final ice blow with your, with, with your ice bullet, you haven't had much experience with a gun. You hit the bird when Ghost, a trained professional, could not. I kind of just look over and I'm like, lucky shot. So, also, so are you okay? as brief. <laughs> People process grief differently. Sometimes it's very delayed. Sometimes it happens immediately. And I just, like, take my gun and reload. I'm not looking her in the eye whatsoever. Sage is just like, alright, I'm gonna focus on shooting birds while idly talking about this very traumatic thing that happened literally uh, uh, less than a day ago. So yours is delayed then? Mm -hmm. I mean... I think the uh, big last one, obviously, I was not too close to Valzier, but we did have a repartee, mm -hmm. I would say. Roll, um, to, roll to hit on your next set of birds. And I'm going to do a different dice. Hang on. Also, how many bullets do you guys have? I was hoping you would forget about that. Um, How do I figure that out? Um, uh, you go to inventory. Mm -hmm. 
and it should be in either your equipment or your backpack. Um, and you should have, I think it's just regular bullets. Um, um, I have... Ghost, I have some bad news. You don't have any bullets in your inventory. I don't think I've ever had any bullets in my inventory. I, I'm going to say for the I'm gonna say for the sake of posterity, you probably had maybe thirty. And that last okay. missing of the bird was your last bullet. And 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 you and you've probably used I'd say maybe like half of them during the raid. So I'd say just to make it easy, you have fifteen bullets left. Now okay. fifteen. Okay, I don't think I've ever had bullets on me this whole time because I was not made aware that you know you had a certain amount of bullets. So in D and D to make to, to make it easy, you've had bullets this whole time. You have been using them. Yeah. <laughs> you have fourteen left. Okay. Just make sure on our next shopping trip you get bullets. Um, okay. It's it's okay. Uh, you don't like arrows. If you have arrows in a quiver, if you shoot a bunch, you can see if you can get them back if they haven't broken. Otherwise, you just have to buy more arrows. It's just like any other ammo. Gotcha. Um. It's okay. You're not so... just pulling bullets from thin air. <laughs> uh, nineteen. By the way. Okay. For my next bird. You're you you can see a satisfying <laughs> feathers just. <laughs> so you get one bird. <laughs> Uh, I have 24 bullets, but they are all different kinds. God fucking damn it, yes, baby! Um, that is another fucking 27. Um, this is a really good set of die that I bought what, last what, week. What bullet were you using there? Were you using an elemental? Uh, yeah, well, that's all I have. I don't have regular bullets. I only have elemental bullets. Mm -hmm. So, let's just say I used a shock one, and now I reloaded with a fire one. Yes. No, I take it back. I want to use a poison one, because I want to watch that bird fall and die and rise. Uh, you, you shoot the bird as, like, a splash of poison comes out of it, and a trail of just poison just... <laughs> like follows it as it falls onto the great beyond. I'm uh, gonna see this and be like, "Are you sure you're okay?" Because what? A, it's a bird. Why? Why would you use poison? Yeah, I guess that's kind of um not great either. And I like unload my poison bullets and I put in my fire bullets. I guess I'll cook him. Um, you can't eat a poisonous bird. Listen. I'm listening. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a fire bullet out because I know I'm gonna hit this bitch. Um, listen. Okay, that's a dirty 20. Um, roll the hit, guys. Oh. Uh, 24. Both of you guys are able to hit your bird. However, Sage half of yours, the other half that's remaining, bobbles onto the, uh, on, onto the, onto the ocean. Fully cooked. Oh, there goes dinner. Um, <laughs> listen, Pibble said something that I did not agree with, and it's taken me a long time to really deconstruct and understand why I disagreed with it. Um, but say he said he didn't want us to feel the pain the hurt that we had went through but that kind of triggered an unfortunate memory that i had where my entire clan was wiped out um and i basically had no family left um even at belfort I didn't really keep up with people um, and, uh, so I tried really hard to just numb the pain and just kind of go about day by day, and I lost several 
years, just numbing that pain. And while I don't think it was good for me, um, or a healthy coping mechanism, um, I needed to feel it in order to really understand and process what I was going through. And that's why after I had met this wonderful, vivacious, colorful ragtag group that has shrunken and grown multiple times. I know that there is both good and bad. While I can't say that it's not gonna hurt that Belzir is gone and she comes to just Conquer gun. Um, yeah, roll her head again. Um, uh, and she brings her gun up to her eye. Well, I can't say that it's not gonna hurt now or fucking that 20. Um, <laughs> it's what not gonna hell? hurt. I know, man. These fucking. This is a great set of die. Um,. I have accepted that bringing Belzir back would be more painful and hurtful to all of us than it would be to appreciate and value the time he spent with us and going forward, taking care to um, not let it happen to more people. And while I agree with Sonaris and the rest of the group, and she, like, takes a step back and, like, shoots, um, another fire bullet. Um, well, I agree with Sonaris and the group that we don't necessarily owe these people anything. I personally don't want to leave them hanging. As you, as you leave on that note, two birds become mm. fully cooked on the, uh, the ocean surface. Um, I kind of want to... Sorry. Ahead. No, go um, ahead. I kind of want to look at her for a second and be like, I fully understand what it's like to lose my family. And then I spent my whole life, and am still spending my life, trying to get revenge. So I get what it's like to basically not cope with the feelings of it but... um and honestly i've only really known you guys for <laughs> a few days <laughs> um so i don't really feel much for uh valzir and his passing i do this feel for you guys guy. and he did um, include me Almost immediately, even though he had no idea who I was. <laughs> um, but, I don't know. I feel like we've created this bond together, so I wanted to make sure you were okay. And, um... And as for helping... The town... Um... Kind of neutral. I'm... I want to do whatever I can to get to the man that murdered my family. But I also think that staying with you guys will be productive as well. So. Yeah. I get that. And Sage just kind of like throws her gun on the ground and like starts to walk towards the ocean where the birds have like fallen in and were cooked and is like gonna try and go and retrieve them you like, make, like, your way, you make your way down the lighthouse and you sort of see where the waves sort of push the the cooked seagulls onto the uh, sandy shores literally just hold the birds up by their wings like 
massive bullet holes in each of them. Don't worry, we can clean these. I just shake my head. <laughs> I appreciate you as a friend. This is as vulnerable as I get. Please don't expect anything otherwise. Also, please don't let me forget my gun up there. I will grab your gun. It's fine. You don't have to come back up. And you are I... extremely tired. Yeah, and you, uh... I don't get very much vulnerable either, so... You, you take a look at Sage's gun. Um, it looks like... Well, make an investigation check on the gun. <laughs> Great. Is it a magic gun? Ooh, it's was a regular a gun. gun. Was this a gun that you got in the Western Pass? Uh, a dirty twenty. This w- w- what? Uh, no, I think. Oh wait, no, twenty-one. No, sorry, twenty-one. I think this was a gun you got during a during BMW. I think, it was, oh, was either. It? I think you literally just picked it from a guy. It was. You did pick it from a guy. It was, it was, it was, it was th- I thought it was no a way, pistol, Franny, yes. and it was the rifle that was in the Buster Mike episode. No. Different gun. Different gun, because I got rid of the pistol. But I picked up the hunting rifle from... I think that was after Granny M's, wasn't it? It was was either during BMW or it was during the coup. Mm. I can't remember right now. I was much later than that. Yeah. Um, but but I, but I digress. Please continue. But uh, but ghosts, you you investigate this particular piece, and you notice that this is indeed a Boar Mark Seven. Okay. Um, um poorly managed. It, it, it looks like that the actual like cocking mechanism seems to be grinding, almost as if <laughs> there is just like sand, dirt maybe shit just like jammed it in there that like just this it, it, <laughs> it, it it's it's Don't it's in... for me like this vanilla you picked it off of a guy who knows what they did with it um but it is um it is very dirty barely functioning the fact that it uh landed the killing blow on a demon is nothing short of a miracle Okay. <laughs> okay. You look concerned about the maintenance of my gun. I do not know how to clean it. Will you teach me? <laughs> I'll still stand with chickens in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Will you teach me? <laughs> Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Just got a bunch um, of seagulls. Yeah, we definitely need to clean your gun because... How the fuck you killed people, I have no idea. Um, you should have seen my other guns. One of them was actually magic. But I, I, I would like to know like, who you took this off of. You probably don't know, but I, I would have liked to know. Were they alive? Some... Were they dead? We will have to do some deep, deep remembering. <laughs> which I don't think I'm capable of doing right now, or else I will cry, and I don't want to do that right now. You can put your mm-hmm. arms down. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I see the chickens. It's fine. <laughs> they need to be in frame for the context. This is the um, audio-only podcast. Yeah. Um, but so... I want to help her clean her gun t- to get it at tip-top shape. Because Jesus Christ. Do you have any cleaning oil? No. Go, go, no. Ghost, you have all of the equipment nope. that you need. At, with, with your background and everything that you do, you can clean a gun. Thank you. I'm like, I didn't realize that I needed so much shit. The, you the best... To, you have the, to get all the pieces and pay the twenty nine ninety five. uh... <laughs> the best... Jeez. The best... The best shot in this whole damn country. No bullets, no cleaning kit. Yes. Best tr- Listen, a certain DM didn't tell me I needed all this shit. A true, so a true professional. Listen. So I guess I clean her gun and then hand it back to her. 
uh, go ahead and do a... Well, honestly, you don't even need to do a check for it. It's, uh, you just need to take 30 minutes of your time on concentrating on it. Um, I'm assuming the two of you make your way, you know, back into Long B. I'm assuming specifically the Bone Inn, um, of which Ghost sort of teaches uninterruptedly Sage, you know, the basic maintenance of a rifle. Yep. I kind of just, like, watch her. I'm just standing, towering above her as she just, like, undoes all the gun stuff. And I'm just like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And she's just like, I didn't do any of this shit. (laughs) Um, After the hours have passed and dusk begins to set over the city of Long B, um, whether, you know, through their through their completion of their tasks or to just call it the end of the day everybody um, eventually makes their way back into the uh, tiny little cupboard room that um, you guys had um, originally in in here Um, you can see that uh, Yuri is actively trying to make space for people to have individual rooms now that Credo opened up space um, the Bonin isn't as packed with refugees anymore. Um, you can see, you know, the, 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 the three, the, th- the three drunken stooges over here, the Gao, Day, and Sonaris, um, already in their own rooms on their beds. Um, Sage, Ghost, Glanton, and Tybalt. You guys have your own rooms at the Bonin. Obviously, free of charge. You guys are back uh, in a central location. I want to sit at the bar. Okay. Tybalt, you make your way on over to the bar. Um, you can see that Yuri is still kind of s- swiping away the uh, sweat from getting the rooms situated. <sighs> Need something? A bottle of... Uh... Mead, please. Yeah, 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 absolutely. He pours on over a tankard orcish mead down, hands it on over. I take and just briefly, with almost like I'm whistling, I want to breathe onto the surface of the liquid ice breath, my ice breath, to make it cold. Okay. The silver dragonborn sort of slowly blows onto the uh, onto the top of the of the glass cooling the top of it the edge of the actual cup itself cool to the touch I sip from it call out Winston and I put a little droplet on my finger and feed it to him it falls on its back I didn't realize I was going to knock you out power to you, my friend, and I down the whole bit of mead. Constitution saving throw? And, and we thought day was a lightweight. <laughs> that is gonna be a uh, 15. Club. 15. So, you're not you're not plastered, but you can definitely feel a little bit the effects of the mead. It's been a while since you've had an honest drink. You're buzzy. I just sit there He's buzzy, kinda warm. Res- buzzy respectfully. I hate you. <laughs> anyway, um, I sit there kind of like just warm. Uh, eight. Si- s- eight silver, sir. I take out a gold and just hand it to him. Gives you two silver back. I tell him keep it. Much obliged, thank you. I, um, I kind of stare into the empty glass. I want to pull out my wand. Okay. You pull out the, uh, the wand that seems to be constructed of bone, warped and shrewd for aesthetic and ergonomic purposes. Besides Yuri, is anybody else in this room with me? As you are, uh, as you're sort of pulling it out, 
Ghost and Sage walk in from their travels. Ghost finishing um, her gun maintenance lesson. I may be heading in the direction of the crowbar to help uh, Nostin out with uh, with RJ. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I um. Can I, I hide my him? wand? Um. It 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 is hard to miss um a big silver dragonborn um at a bar. So okay. you definitely. I guess. Can I see his wand? Is a more accurate question. Passive. I, Oh, hang on, let me get off my Kroger list. Your passive perception, you don't have to roll, it should just oh, be on your left. 15. 15. Sorry. You can yep. see it. Uh, I kind of want to figure out what it is, so I want to walk over to him and be like, what's that wand? I look at her. Look at the wand. It is, uh, it is my wand. Well, no shit. What does I'm, it do? When you have to be blunt like that, I mean, it does what you think it does. It lets me channel my power through it in order to perform my magic. You didn't use a wand before, though. What do you mean? When you made that guy run away, you just touched him. When, I'm assuming you brought us out of the veil, I didn't see a wand. I use this as more of a defensive instrument. Mm -hmm. Any of my other magic, usually I can channel through myself, but this helps me channel it more keenly. Like I did... From the little uh, demonstration earlier, I used the wand. It helps me perform my necromancy in, in a way that is far more stable. You mean that gross creature that you put on the table and then smacked it directly onto the table? The homunculuses feel nothing. They're made of nothing but bits. They did not feel any pain. I wasn't concerned about that. I was concerned about the cleanliness of the table. It wasn't a In great my line of It wasn't a great thing to clean up, I'll, I'll say that. My apologies, but in my line of work, a little bit of blood and grime isn't anything to fret over. I wasn't fretting, but the cleanliness of a restaurant is very important. Or a bar, whichever one we're in. OSHA standards are a thing, Tibble. Come on. <laughs> I, I respect your how, hygiene. How Inspector walks in. <laughs> but is there anything else you would like to discuss? What else can you do? Wow, just really laying it out on the table now, aren't we? Well, well you're new. Fair enough. I, uh... I don't want to ruin this establishment anymore. We can step outside. outside. I was about to say the same thing. Great minds. <laughs> By all means. I look at Sage. Do you want to, uh, watch this little demonstration? Miss Sage? Uh, uh, <laughs> no from the dog. Uh, I, I, I just look over at Glanton and I'm just like, I want to keep an eye on Glanton. And also, I want to keep an eye on Ghost. Glanton's I don't know. Gl Glanton's oh, currently right. at the crowbar right now. I look over at Ghost and I'm like, I mean, I don't really fucking know you. And like, I've known her for objectively like twice as long as I've known you. So I kind of have to go default trust her. Plus, she also has a gun. She also cares about cleanliness, which. Fair hmm. enough. I mean, by all means, just follow me then. And I get up. I put Winston away, <laughs> even though he's passed out. I kind of put him in my pocket. I just, and just put my gun like cocked. And I walk outside. Follow. Kind of, kind of take in the night air. You can see, mm. uh, you can see above that the uh, 
the um, the waxing moon sort of gives nice ambient moonlight. The candles and and uh, and lanterns are still lit across a sort of bustling nightlife in Long Bee. You can see that some are still continuing to revel over the champion's successes um, just yesterday. Um, but yeah. I go outside, I stand in the most open place I can in front of the tavern inn. What would you like me to demonstrate first? I can show you offensive spells, or I can show you more utility. Um... Do what you're best at. Like, what's your greatest thing? <laughs> I kind of smile slightly. That I can do. Fifth level spell right at my no. level! <laughs> I want to look around for any wildlife scurrying about in this town. Like, near me. Oh, uh, make a nature check. The Crucio like curse. Goku wanting Frieza to reach its maximum because he wants to fight him at his best. Uh, nature is going to be a fourteen. Fourteen. It's not hard to spot that there is a um, that there is a lone. I'm trying to remember the actual name of the of the actual tree itself. Um, regardless, there is a thin white branched tree with a uh, you know birch. It's a that's a birch. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't play enough Minecraft, so thank you. Oh, that <laughs> well, that's a simple tree. Okay. No, that, no, that, no, that, that, that was that, that was just Boy Scout. That was just Boy. That was a Boy Scout nature check. Um, yeah. With a with a lonely little uh, lonely little squirrel feasting on a nut. A squeaky A little squiggity squiggin. Uh, I squiggity squiggin. Squeakin' it, squeakin'. Stop. Squeak it. Uh, uh, I cast... Is missing. I cast... <laughs> chill Touch. And I make... My hand... Spectral... Again, all my magic has this iridescent... Kind of purple silver to it. My eyes kind of flash. And I make... This ghostly hand appear right near the squirrel... And I want to grab, snap its neck. Don't Oof. even don't even have to roll to hit. That ghostly apparition of your own hand with sort of like a smoking blue visage mm -hmm. onto it grabs onto the neck of the squirrel without it even noticing it. <laughs> Dead. I want it to drop, and I will go over to it and pick it up. It sort of falls on a branch. <laughs> falls onto the floor. I pick it up by its uh, tail, and I walk back over. And I lay it on the ground in front of them. That was the first part. That was more offensive. This. This is where I will show you why I'm the only professor. That teaches necromancy at Belfort. And I cast. I cast Animate Dead. Okay. On it. I cast Animate Dead on it, and then I, um. As I do, it will come back to life, but its eyes glow like Winston's do, with the same kind of magic mind. The color magic that I cast. Mm -hmm. As it comes back to life and kind of cracks its neck back into place, I hold out my hand for it to climb in, or hold out my palm and let it climb into my hand. You see that, uh, you see that Winston sort of almost drunkenly sort of touches it as the squirrel. They kind of play fight a little bit. That's enough, Winston. That's enough. He kind of curls back. 
I take the squirrel and I will cast or I will do this I will take it and sorry I'm reading a spell Mm. I will whisper to it in a language that is a mixture of draconic and infernal okay I want to cast comprehend languages you will immediately understand what he is saying okay what I am saying and I'm casting uh, create undead Or no, I bet. Here we go. I take it. I, s- I essentially, because it's still under my spell, rip its head off. And then show the two halves. It is not moving. And slowly but surely, I cast Create Dead create undead and I make the body moving and I make the head moving you can see that the black beady eyes of the um, of the squirrel with a little bit of purple you know glowing underneath move as the tail on the other half twitches and I'll put the head back together and it becomes one being again the head looking around it's lopsided it's not staying on cor- quite correctly but it'll stay that's about it I can't really show you on a larger scale because otherwise most people turn away that's kind of cool literally turns around a corner and just vomits that's kind of cool my guy can you do the whole chill touch thing with like bigger people and like snap their necks? Cause that'd be really nice in battle. Yes, it's not so much like a mage hand like a normal wizard could do, but it's, I mean, that was just a rudimentary. It kills very quickly, yes. It will do that. Um, just promise just... you won't bring the bad guys back to life, though. Just leave them dead, you know? In, in my experience, I'm not one to get into a fight. That doesn't say I haven't learned many spells to defend myself, but I'm I'm not one to want to purposefully kill others. I usually work with the aftermath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna to... I'm, I'm gonna tell you really quick. Um, if you're gonna stick with us, which I'm assuming you are, because you literally said that you were sent to stick with us for some reason. Um, we get into fights a lot, or also some reason, I don't know why, it seems like it just finds us. So, um, you might want to strengthen your defense skills and kill more people, you know? I, I'm, I'm well aware of your, all of your, uh, your infamy, I guess. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that's good, that's good. I didn't say I was adverse to killing. If I have to, I will. I've had to do it in defense before. There are people that try to test me. Uh, also, really quick, is that squirrel officially like dead, or like did you actually bring it back to life and it's just no, going to crush dro- its neck forever? No, I just dropped the undead spell and the corpse lays on the ground. You drop the oh. undead spell and both and and the head like falls off. The squirrel like body half falls off. It falls apart after everything you did to it. I thought you said you could bring things back to life, to, like, normal. I can. That was just merely a demonstration. Again, I work on larger scale. I usually work with actual humanoid corpses. You can't do it with animals. I mean, Winston here is a prime example of something that stayed around. Again, listen... It's not a perfect science, and again, I, that's why I'm also here on my own behalf, besides being sent. I'm here to do my own research. I'm here to figure out a more permanent solution. 
that doesn't to say I haven't had it work, but again, like the fear that comes with animating corpses, they don't really come back as they were. I'm just using what I know and what I've learned. Now, Winston, on the other hand, Winston's kind of my little victory. Right. Winston so, was a. F mm -hmm. So you just said that corpses don't come back the like normal, and yet you wanted to uh, try it out on my group's friend. He's not really my friend, to be honest. Uh, I only know him for like three days, but like That's I know they're pretty emotional about him. H comes back from around the corner. Yeah. What he said, and then goes back around the corner to vomit more. <laughs> I. <laughs> Listen, it wasn't it wasn't going to be oh we dig up the body and I just animate him and he's back to normal. No, it wasn't going to be just a quick process. It would have taken time. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I would have had to probably do an autopsy. Cause if I, I can't just do it on ev on any person. It depends on what they die from. Poisonous mushroom. Okay, that's a lot easier to work with. You just <laughs> simply clear. I, I would no. I, I, I could. I could basically go through the process. I, I would. I would somehow clear the poison in his body. Probably through some form of either medicinal druidic magic or. You know, I can work my way through it, trying to clear the poison, and then. Listen, there's a there's a multitude of things at play, but I would like to try. I've done it once or twice to humanoid people before, and again, the results aren't great. Winston again is my one good experiment. He was a normal field mouse that I had for a while. I decided to kill him to see if it would work. One day I just was like, okay. He was there for experimentation. Took it upon myself to do what I just did to the squirrel, except a little more humanely. Through a mixture of necromancy and enchantment and conjuration, these mixtures of these ideas of magic, I was able to make this happen. And I, hand, I have one stone in my hand. Yes, he's a skeleton. He wasn't like this before. I've just had him for a very, very long time, and he stayed like this. he He's a mouse. He's, he's not going to live forever, so yes, he is, they would rot away. With humanoids, however, when I've tried it, they usually stay fine. They don't decay. They only... They just take as much brunt force as they would as when they were originally living. So if a man gets stabbed, a man I've, uh, I, a person I brought back animated, they get stabbed, they will find, they will have that wound as if they got stabbed before. Nothing changes on that end. It's just making it a more permanent solution with bringing all the personality, all the life back. No changes. It's still very rudimentary, but. Yeah, it's my goal. I, I get what you're saying, but I've heard basically that you have had unsuccessfulness, except for with a rat. So, I mean, again, I don't really know the I don't really know the guy from Adam, so I don't have much emotional attachment. But I do know that the people that I'm traveling with has a lot of attachment to him. So. If anything, if they even were to allow you, I would think that they'd want it to be successful and not a, well, we tried. <laughs> but, I mean, your powers are cool, my guy. You can reanimate stuff, just don't reanimate the evil people, you know? Like, unless you're going to attack the more evil people with the evil people, you know? Like, I get it. Other than that, you're cool. I will say experimentation is a process of trials and errors. Oh no, you know, I get it. Just don't trial don't, and error. I don't, I don't know if you've ever heard of the scientific method. There's a lot to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not dumb. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Wasn't insisting that, but I get where the insult might have been said. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, so, I mean, you could trial and error on any random corpse in this city, but, uh, don't trial and error on my traveling companion's friend. Again, because... lo heard loud and clear, Crystal. Because yeah, even though I think you're cool, I will shoot, and then you'll have to trial and error on yourself. So. Very understood. Thank you. You're welcome. But thank you for showing me your powers, or at least some of them. No problem. And I just kind of nod and walk back into the inn. I'm gonna go check on Sage. And I'll Sage sigh comes and go back upstairs. Sage has Sage lost comes almost back. Sage has almost lost twenty five percent of her <laughs> body weight and vomit. I am extremely dehydrated. <laughs> Are you okay? I it's actually quite, just, it's actually quite impressive. I feel more okay knowing that I've known you for three days and you don't want to kill my friend and bring him back from the dead. And that this weird creepo is just being a weird creepo and just, I don't know. I've vomited a lot. I was very grossed out when he ripped the squirrel's head off, which is actually not that big of a deal considering I just shot some birds out but it was something about it <laughs> something about it well I think something we need to get it. you some uh, water I would love <laughs> walking water I think you need some water drink. therapy <laughs> <laughs> that too, but you know. <laughs> Hold on, let me break out the meme machine. Every single one of us oh, has no. a tragic past. We all need therapy. Hey, I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm perfectly mm. fine too. I don't know what you're talking about either. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, as the uh, <laughs> as 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 the uh, as the three individuals make their way back into the Bone Inn, uh, you're 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 sort of able to see. Um, Degeo, Sonaris, and Day sort of making their way out of their 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 doors in a slightly less drunken stupor at the at the commotion um, outside. What question mark? My head hurts. So, Am I gonna throw up? I feel like I'm not. gonna throw up, but like, I can't. I can't let y'all see me be weak! <laughs> it's fine. It's, just it's, just it's not a sign of weakness, it's just throw your body up, rejecting up, what you put in it. I mean, everybody's throwing You just might feel up. weak after throwing up. Give you some water. Just chug a lot of water. Sage wants to go over to the gale and just bear hug and be like, Oh, you, man. Oh, hey, guys. Um, he smells like throw up, so I mean, you can throw up, he's uh, fine. So, so, Sage, you hug the Gayo. <laughs> the Gayo make a constitution save. Constitution. Oh, no. I can't it's like, plus three, so hold on. Special bond. Special bond. Special bond. 20! Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Moment, at, at, the the, pukes all over Sage. at the acidic smell of vomit coming from Sage's general aura, you hold your liquor. Good job. Um, can I tell that they are basically, like, drunk slash hungover? You don't even have to do an inside check. It is quite sweet. It is quite obvious that they have done, you know, a gauntlet, if you will. I look at over, I look over at Ghost, and like, Ghost! I'm Come gonna... on and join us, have some fun for once! Um, I'm gonna I'm look wondering. at Sage and say, hey, uh, you smell like throw up, and I don't think they need to be smelling that right now, or we're gonna yeah. have more throw up on our hands. Yes. So you might want to go take a shower or brush yeah. your teeth. You can have a drink. I love I love you, Sage, but please. <laughs> <laughs> please. 
Paige is just like, alright, I guess I'll go shower or whatever, and just... I like flowers when you come back out, please. Yeah, there, 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 there's the washroom. You can take your time in there. And then you to see if I make it. 18, hell yeah. You, 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 you find it, you, you're able to find, you know, all of the equipment you need to get the, uh, the smell of throw-up off your person. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. I also just stand in the shower for an extremely long time with the rest of my mouth open. Because that's how I'll get hydrated. Nice. Um, you drink the bath water. Yes, nice. I do. Yes. Gross. Yes, Delicious. I do. You drink the medieval bath water. Let's get it. Love yes. the poop yeah, this water is out of the face. <laughs> this is not your <laughs> During which you're just water. wondering where your life has gone. Yes, Alex. Err. Uh, I want to say that I went upstairs to my room and I wanted to do something real quick. Okay. Before you do move on. Do we need to leave? <laughs> do we need to do we, leave? Do we see him come in? And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, I would have passed by you probably. Yeah, everybody, everybody saw him. Do we see him go upstairs? Good night, yeah, Tibble! Go yeah, yeah it, 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 I wasn't keeping it a secret. He just kind of went to his room. I'm like yelling at him like, Good night! I kind of wave Bye. a hand. I give him, I, I just look at him. Bye. Stare at him. As he walks by. I'll meet uh, eyes with Sonaris and I'll just nod. Kind of like, kind of like with a slight scalp, but no, nothing too aggr- like, n- aggressive. You uh, you feel the daggers behind your behind your back, Tibble. I, f- I ignore them. I shrug it off. It doesn't phase me. Um, I wasn't, trying, wasn't, wasn't trying to phase you, rather. Uh... Sage, Ghost, Tegeo, Sonaris, and Day are at the bone in with Glanton missing. Where's Glanton? Buddy, where's my little old buddy? Anyone know? <laughs> no idea. Does anyone know? Oh, God, nobody I knows. Feel, I feel like that's that's Why? a good question. Does anybody know that he went to go? He didn't tell anybody. No, only, only the person will know. Who, only the person who knows. I th- went I upstairs to do something I, I, told us. I thought people would like would have like I thought people would have assumed that like since RJ was not present at all. Like, oh I god, RJ wasn't there either. <laughs> Where did RJ go? He wasn't there the whole bell run. Realizing that RJ was missing, so now we think Lantern attack. is missing. Roll for panic attack. Oh god, is he still in the veil? Oh no. Anaris is actually having a drunken panic attack in this fucking but, uh, like, like, guys, oh, we have to fine. find RJ. Yeah. Yeah, RJ Glanton, we gone. dropped him in the I, veil. I, oh no! We RJ in the I veil. Would, like assumed that everybody knew that. Like I dropped that I dropped RJ off before I don't, go, before going into the no, veil. No, I don't think so. But I, mean, I can offer to go find him. Us. I don't remember you telling us. I can offer to go find him. I, I, I just assumed, like, since, like, in during that preparation period before we went to the Vale, that, that whole entire thing I mean, happened. I'll, I'll you, you sure, probably. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah, he's Glenn. He's fine. Uh, it's getting he's late. Kind of. It's getting late. I, I, I still kind of want to go look for him just to make sure. Okay. Um, Dad's mm-hmm. calling my name. Plus, I, I only need, like, four like, hours, so... In-game, in in real life. <laughs> Alright, Alex, you said you wanted to do something. Yeah, Sorry. I just want to do something briefly. Go ahead. Uh, as, um, as Ghost sort of makes her way out of the bone-in, the rest of the party generally sort of collects their... the, the themselves in order to make their way back to their rooms. Tibble is already in his. Um. I'll sit on my bed and I'll have Winston just kind of sitting on, I guess, what the equivalent of a night uh, end table would be. Mm-hmm. Just sit right there. I look at my wand in my hand. I'll pull out my dagger and I'll prick my finger. And I'll run the blood across the wand and I want to just focus on the wand. Okay, make a... Uh... Either an investigation or an arcane check. 
I'll do Arc uh, either way. I'll do Arcane. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay. As soon as you sort of rest the, uh, the, the or, or drag the blood along the neck of the wand, you can see that along the edges of where your blood was sort of splattered across, and only on that small strip, nowhere else on the wand, you can see, you know, small breaches of iridescent light peeking through a little bit. I want to try to focus and see what I could see with that energy. You said you so, what, what, did, what did you roll? Similar on the to the what we discussed with the first time I ever used the wand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was your arcane check again? It was a, a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Um, through these light leaks, you can peer in, and it's a very similar look within this light that you've seen in other forms of astral energy that you've seen before. Um, you can see a white space within the wand. And that white space seems infinitesimally large. Then that white space begins to fade away as your blood begins to encroach onto those light leaks as they dissipate. I hold on to the wand and just kind of ponder in thought for a moment and then put it away. And then I will take off my glasses and kind of get ready into bed and I'll look at Winston. We have a lot a lot, a lot of work to do, my friend. See that, uh, you can see that Winston, as soon as you say that sort of nestles under your chin just a little bit you can generally tell that he's definitely more excited than you are and I'll smile contently and I'll go to bed ghost where yeah. do you go, where do you go looking for glanton uh well first where is he again you don't know. The crowbar, uh... <laughs> Sorry. No, that's yeah. fine. Uh, is there anybody, like, on the street? There's a few people still on the street. Most of them are, you know, businesses beginning to close. A good chunk of them are uh, people still, you know, had a little bit too much meat in their cup, if you know what I mean, that are making their ways, you know. Well, I want... I want to ask around and ask if they saw a big metal man yes. <laughs> walking in which way they walk. Like he he might have gone. You can see you can you can see uh you can see sort of a blue tiefling um walking with, with a little bit of a with a little bit of a limp, just uh, making his way past you. Excuse me, sir. Or, ma'am, I don't remember if you genderized him. Uh, <laughs> the tiefling turns around. You can see that there is a thick unibrow on them. Yeah, what can I do for you? <laughs> Have you seen a big metal man walking this way? Kind of hard to miss, Glanton. Points towards, <laughs> the, points towards the crowbar. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to head towards the crowbar. Thank you! Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, as soon as you make your way into the crowbar, um, you can see uh, this this um, uh, Glanton right there, sort of in the thick of it, helping to build, you know, a mechanical metal frame um, with a uh, Nostin 
They're both just under under the lamplight, just working the night. What you doing? Making herself known, Glanton. You uh, you're finally like shocked out of your work. I like I like look over at the door like a little bit startled. I was like, oh, hello, ghost. I was not expecting anyone here at this hour. Well, when you don't tell people where you're going and you don't show up at the hour that you're talking about, people get worried. So I came looking. My apologies. I... It must have slipped my mind. So what you doing? I am fulfilling a promise to a friend. RJ here was in need of a body, and I pro promised him that I would give, that I would build him one. Hello, so, ghost. Lovely to see you again. Hello, RJ. You know, you're very polite, Glenn. Is, is that a problem? Mm -mm. No. But also, yes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe. It is simply how I was raised. It's embedded in my in my programming, as it were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do you ever like cuss or get mad or anything like that? I know you go into like rage mode, but like when you're just you, do you ever you know just let loose? I do. The outside of battle. I do go into a mild form of a rage mode, but it is not entirely common. My outburst a after Valzir's death, that was not rage mode, and that was me tr truly okay. becoming angry. Gotcha. In, in terms of swearing, I, I have been told that Doing so is in rather poor taste. However, in terms of, say, reading a message out loud, and there, and there are swears in there, I prefer to read the the message verbatim. And although I slightly, slightly, damn it! <laughs> Who be posting fucking money in my god? Oh, Sarah. Sarah. I do cuss a little, actually. Oh yeah? What word? Probably fuck. <laughs> like the only Probably time that, fuck. Like, oh, like, I'm trying to explain that like the only time that Glanton has ever cussed. You, the, uh, the only time oh. that Glanton has ever cussed was when, when he got that letter from Spicy. And he was reading the letter verbatim and Spicy wrote several several cuss words in there. Oh, and, and and every single time that he that he was kind of forced to say a cuss word while reading the while reading the le the letter verbatim, he was let he kept apologizing, like that was. So you're, so, yeah. saying, Sorry. so you're saying that if I want you to cuss, I just need to write down all of the cuss words and ask you to read it. I would prefer that you did not do that. <laughs> yeah, but your politeness would kind of force you to read it, right? Because, like... Are you trying say to corrupt him? Because he... <laughs> you say saying no, it's kind of mean. To change him, I can change him. Please <laughs> <laughs> don't try and change our baby boy. Don't change Glenn. Sorry. Not, I'm everyone, not, baby not boy. everyone needs to be Moorag. Please, I'm, leave, I'm, leave I'm, Glanton I'm, alone. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Glanton. I'm not gonna force you to read any bad words. Right, so For now. For Please. now. I suppose that is good to hear. I was starting <laughs> to feel rather uncomfortable. Damn. <laughs> you know, I can make the robot feel uncomfortable, though. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I was the wrong choice to come and find you, but I found you. <laughs> um. <laughs> it couldn't. She was busy vomiting. Oh god. Um, well, I guess I'll let you get back to tinkering. 
Thank you, Ghost. <laughs> if you if you could let the rest of the rest of the group know where where I am, I would wholeheartedly appreciate it. Uh, we'll do. They're a little drunk, so even if I do tell them, they might forget. But we'll see what happens. I see. Depending on how our progress goes tonight, I will. I will most likely return back back to the inn for breakfast in the morning. Are you going to do the sh- walk of shame? I am sorry, I do not follow. What is the walk of shame? <laughs> Don't corrupt him. Do not corrupt him. It's just when you it's just when you don't sleep in a bed at night and you just come home early in the morning without oh God, in the same know. clothing. <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying not to corrupt him like you asked. What do you what do you oh want from me? I, I do not sleep in a bed normally. I normally sleep standing up. Alright, well it's when you don't sleep in your own room. How about that? And How then you then, then you walk home <clears throat> in the same clothing. Cover your ears, Clinton. <laughs> don't, don't be corrupted. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Just, just, just forget I said anything about the walk of shame. That's not a thing. Um, oh I was mistaken. Um, you know what? It's it's the walk of happiness. How about that? Oh, no. <laughs> the walk of happiness. Clinton is rather the confused walk right of now. Happiness. That's oh. fine. All... R- RJ speaks. All of these nomenclatures are unknown to me. Glanton, can you update my encyclopedic knowledge? What is walk of happiness plus walk of shame? I am, I am trying to wrap my head around it as well, RJ. I heard a phrase from a dwarf not long ago. I believe his exact expression was for a similar awkward situation. He retorted, I, I, I. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Goddamn. <laughs> uh, you know what? Just delete that from your brain. Right? You could do that, right? <laughs> Just delete uh, the sentences. I, I will not remember we'll- the past five minutes. Per your request. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. As a... How about you, Glanton? It worked. What is that? <laughs> no, no, don't work. Our, our, RJ records everything around him. Like he he's a he's a record keeper. Glanton can't do that. RJ is very well, different. Glanton can try. <laughs> Gl- Glant Glanton has like no matter how hard you try, Glanton, you will never forget this. Uh, yeah, Glanton has like a fucking eidetic memory or some shit. Oh, well. You know what? If you really want to know, you should you should ask someone other than me. Actually, you know, you should ask uh, Sonaris. I th- <laughs> he might know. <laughs> oh my god. I will, I will make a note of that and. <laughs> I will investigate at a later date. Oh my god. Sounds phenomenal. Can you promise that I'm in the room when you do it, please? Because I would love would love to hear his explanation. I will see what I can do. Thank you so much. Oh my god. Dude, I don't even I don't even care about the war anymore. All I care about is this. <laughs> Who knew Ghost would be fucking shit up? <laughs> the, 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 the awkward the talk that Benares gives Blanton about the birds and the bees is the final BB, BBEG. You know, I, I, I was this close to tagging along. I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, I'm, uh, I'm assuming after this... <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I'm assuming after... This uh, lovely exchange, um, 
ghost, I'm assuming you make your way back to the, uh, to the Bone Inn for a long yeah. day's rest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna awkwardly step out and be like, yep, I'll, uh, <clears throat> see you after your walk in the morning. As, and- a, <laughs> as ghost, uh, leaves, uh, uh, Nostin sort of looks on over to Glanton and just <laughs> fucking belts out laughing. <laughs> As the as the as the midnight oil continues to churn over at the crowbar, um, everybody sort of makes their way on over to the to your respective beds and to somebody else. A sort of general stopping area after the sort of neck, collarbone, and like top half of the breastplate have been completed, more or less. Everybody sort of makes their way on over to a, you know, their respective resting place. As soon as everybody is able to finally shut their eyes for the day, and they begin to, you know, lose their minds to the to the escapes of dreams, your consciousness speaks to you. Oh shit. We haven't had a we haven't had a consciousness speak to us in I almost <laughs> how long. I almost put it in the memes chat. <laughs> yeah. you almost put the consciousness <laughs> in, the, in the meme chat? Hey yeah. yo. Okay. I hope this message reaches you. I may not have the benefit of time, but I hope to keep this brief. What you are hopefully seeing right now is Vaka, where my pastor died completing the transference. However, I do not know why I am trapped inside. I feel slow and cold here. I assume so much time has passed that the form Tiberius left me and is beginning to give way. But if my hibernation was lifted, then dark days have returned. I was instructed to guide you to me. Find a way into Vaka, and I'll give you the means to an end that my master, unfortunately, did not have time. So much has happened, in case anybody was wondering what that Morse code meant. And I think that's where we're going to end it today. Damn. So, since the, we're resting now, does that mean I get to do a long rest again? Yeah, everybody gets another long rest. <sighs> oh my god, the end. Why'd you have to go and tell Glanton all that naughty stuff? He's supposed to be Disgusting. here. Listen, I forgot he was a pure innocent boy, so I was trying to joke yeah, around. I forgot he wasn't pressing against the wall like in the other campaign. Oh my hey, gosh. Hey, listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> all right. I, at least I didn't yeah, ask him to save water, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.